it says it. We're live! Hello, everyone. This is This Week in Science. All three of us are here in the virtual house, and I guess we should just get on with the show because it's about a minute to 8 p.m. Pacific time. Right on time. Mm -hmm. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. The world, according to Isaac Asimov, gains scientific knowledge faster than society gains wisdom. If true, we are on a trajectory of ever-increasing disparity between what we have learned through science and how we can wisely implement that knowledge through an increasingly archaic society of barbarians. While this wisdom of society may never catch up to the accelerating knowledge of science, we can at least hope that the modern-day barbarian will allow science to continue its progress. And maybe, just maybe, the day will come when all wisdom is rooted in knowledge and the barbarians tune into This Week in Science. Coming up next. Good science to you, Kirsten and Blair. Good science to you too, Justin. How did you turn hey, upside I down? Know. I must have hit the wrong He's button. He's in space. You're in space. I'm floating in space right now. Yes. Who knew Vacaville was so entertaining? <laughs> <sighs> that's that's some pretty tricky camera work there, Justin. For those who are listening to this in the audio version sometime in the future, Justin just turned his camera upside down. Was That's a good point. Does anybody in the podcast arena know that we are posting these shows up on the YouTubes? We do say it every time. At the end of the show, yeah, but who many... to the very end of the show? It's at the very end of the show, and so many people, people might People hear have... the wrap-up, and they hit next oh, to hear the next show. Yeah. YouTube.com so... slash This Week in Science. That's right. Wow. Thank you, Blair. So you I did it. <laughs> can actually watch all of it. All of it in its videographical glory. And you can feast your eyes on the lovely Blairla. That's true. Blairla? Where did that did, did I miss something last week? Uh, no. <laughs> Not at all. That's a that's a um Futurama reference. Futurama. Think. Yeah. Always with the Futurama references. Okay, we got we, we got news, right? Where there's yes. news, yes. stories, things we want to talk about. I have some stories about... Uh, oh, hey, maybe Blair and I can talk about this one. Birds knowing the speed limit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some interesting info on copper and our brains. And, I don't know, a little gender swapping? Sweet. That's just, to, that's just to get us going a little bit. Mm -hmm. Justin, what did you bring? Uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, let's see. This is an interesting story for a couple of reasons, but uh, the tagline here is playing video games can boost your brain power, at least if you're a girl. Uh, we figured out a way to test drugs for elemental impurities. Uh, apparently, we haven't really been doing that very much. Yeah. And... And, uh, oh, and a way to create gardens everywhere. Hmm. Oh, I like I like gardens. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. And Blair, what did you bring? Uh, well, I also wanted to talk about uh, birds being radar guns on the highways in Europe. Pretty cool. <laughs> um, also, a nice little feel-good uh, news story about a dog saving a cat's life, just for fun. <laughs> also, tiger sharks and how their attacks are on the rise, and we're not exactly sure why. And a certain species where the mother eats her young that beg too much. That's right. <laughs> Ooh. I totally know why she would do that. Oh, what are you talking about? 
<laughs> no, nothing, nothing. Don't oh, listen yeah. to me. Don't listen to me. To I'm share. Just, a, just a harried mom. That's all. That's okay. all. <sighs> so anyway, I thought I'd start the show off with you know a little uplifting end of the world business. Let's start at the very end of the world. The cafe at the end of the universe. That's right. So the international panel on climate change. Who? Uh, it's a group of many, not just like five, but many, many hundreds of scientists working together to analyze information related to climate change and give a report that can be understood by members of the scientific community who are within the climate change field, outside the climate change field, and people who are in politics and don't even really know anything about science. So, they, they draft this report, they do it, they, they update it every few years, and there is a draft that has been released, and um, uh, it doesn't look really good. It's not so, it's not, just really not that promising for us. It's even more evidence that humans are responsible or linked to the changes in uh, in temperature, the warming of the climate overall, the increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Um, uh, the New York Times emphasized that uh, the jump was from a 90% confidence interval to 95%, so 5% increase, making it much more uh, that in maybe not necessarily in physics terms, it's not a five sigma result, but in biology, where I come from, 95% confidence is pretty darn good. A lot of people base their conclusions on 95% confidence. Uh, let's see, the climate sensitivity and the amount of temperatures will rise if carbon dioxide levels are uh, doubled, will probably end up with a temperature increase from about 2 degrees to 1.5 degrees, but it's possible that mean temperatures at the end of the century are going to end up being up by about 5 degrees centigrade and that we're going to be seeing by 2100 we'll be seeing uh, 5 to 10 feet I don't remember the exact number it's 5 it's to 10 I think 3 to 8 3 to 8 feet I yeah. thought it was 5 to 10 feet of uh, of sea level increase it's, uh, the, I've heard it's the, the low end is three, the upper end is like eight, maybe it's ten. Um, now, for this new, dra for for this this new very, draft? Very new draft, yeah. Okay. Uh, which they actually, they dialed back because it was saying the minimum was up at, I think, five or four and eight or something, you know, uh, for the minimum. They dialed back the minimum back down to three feet, but the yeah. upper end. Uh, actually went up a little higher. Went so, up a little higher. Yeah, which, you know, if you're New Orleans, you know, downtown New Orleans, if you're under 9 feet of water, 12 feet of water, it may not make a whole lot of difference. Um, but if you're New York, for example, which just the less than a foot that we've increased since they built Manhattan, almost a foot of, of sea level rise that we've had since Manhattan was constructed, uh, you see storms being able to come ashore much uh, much deeper and do a lot more flooding as it is. You do a couple more feet and you're definitely into some <laughs> some board up the basements and the lower floors and turn you know try to ship in dirt, which I think you could probably afford to do in Wall Street. Uh, you know they've done that they've done that here um, areas along the Delta. Uh, They've actually raised downtown Sacramento, I think, eight or fourteen feet or something like that with plan. I mean, they just built it up. Entire yeah. downtown area, when they deconstruct one of the older buildings, you see all these amazing arches and storefronts that must have looked really great in the day. And they're all on the subfloor. They're all below street level. Because they, they added dirt to everything. Um, expensive way to do it, but that's you're probably gonna see more and more of that <laughs> as being an option to keep cities from being completely underwater. Yeah, and the a lot of the world's populations are along coastal areas because they're great for economic reasons, for uh, 
for food reasons. There's lots of food at the. The weather's uh, nicer. The, the weather's nice better. too. It's yeah, just yeah, exactly. There are lots stuff. of things. Quality of life at the coastal regions is usually pretty darn good, mm -hmm. and but. That also means that there are a lot of cities that are low-lying and near sea level already, and so a lot of cities are going to see some, going to need some uh, some help as sea levels rise. And it's just going to be interesting to see how we know that there are going to be more severe storms. This is something that is coming out the with this draft with previous uh, information that it's not just going to be oh it's just going to be hotter it's just that we're going to we're, and we might not necessarily see more storms but storms that we will see will be more severe yeah and it'll be colder too I mean that's the thing it's and it'll gonna, be colder extremes it'll be colder will in Europe. more extreme yeah but Europe will have a new ice age because the Gulf yeah. Stream yeah. is going to reverse yeah and or at least all the, those people will be in a huge amount of trouble mm -hmm. all those people in Europe mm -hmm. Yeah, again, I don't know how many times I pointed out, but I think uh, London is the same uh, point north as Juneau, Alaska. Mm -hmm. It's just it gets this, uh, the conveyor belt of the Atlantic brings all this warm air north. You know, I'm not really too worried about the flooding situation, even though I mentioned that mm -hmm. in both of my scenarios are. Um, I think that the human engineering can overcome. We can, we, you yeah. know, it might even be a great building project if, you know, 100 years from now the economy is, you know, experiencing a personal spacecraft purchasing bubble or <laughs> whatever the... <laughs> yeah, the it's just a matter of where people want to put their energies, where they want to put mm -hmm. their money, where politicians want to try and make things happen. You know, there's mm -hmm. there are a lot there's a lot of interplay, the politic politicization of climate science. There's a lot of stuff going on there. But, you know, we have people who are trying to build 1,600 meter tall, uh, not meter tall, six, yes, 1,600 foot tall uh, skyscrapers currently. There, a, a group out of Finland just came up with a carbon fiber based elevator cable that's going to allow skyscrapers to reach over a kilometer, probably up to like a mile in height. Mm -hmm. Because elevators will be, the cabling will be lighter, the cabling will be stronger, we're going to be building giant skyscrapers that really do scrape the sky. You mean we can't build some kind of sea barricade to keep the sea level rise away for a little? I think we can do it, people. Yeah, and it's going to be one of those fun uh, projects that we can all uh, get our backs into. Or at but least... Venice will be gone in about 20 years, right? Probably. <laughs> yeah, but Venice is already... the. The water's already going onto the streets in Venice. It's it's not going to be long before they're just done. Yeah, and there's a lot at of. At a certain point, there's the the this what is it? Jump ship, you know. Mm. You run or you or you sink sink or jump jump ship ship. Which one do you want to do? Mm. Venice is going to be one of those one of those things. There are islands, Kiribati, out in the South Pacific. It's another island. It's going to disappear. People have to leave. People have to do something else. It's going to be a lot of swapping around. And so, yay, on that bright note, da -da -da -da, the world's not going to end, but things are getting just even more complicated. That's all. Justin, what do you have, science you want to talk about? This is my favorite story uh, this week. This is from Queen Mary University of London. Certain types of video games can help to train the brain to become more agile and improve strategic thinking. Uh, the researchers recruited 72 volunteers and measured their cognitive flexibility, described as a person's ability to adapt and switch between tasks and think about multiple ideas at a given time to solve problems. Two groups of volunteers were trained to play different versions of a real-time strategy game called StarCraft which is a fast-paced game where players have to construct and organize armies to battle an enemy. Third of the, a third of the group played a life simulation video game called The Sims, which does not require much memory or as many tactics in the real time. All the volunteers played the video games for 40 hours over, uh, for 40 hours over six to eight weeks and were subjected to a variety of psychological tests before and after. All the participants happened to be female. <laughs> That's unusual. Uh, well, 
as the study was unable to recruit a sufficient number of male volunteers who played video games for less than two hours a week already. That's funny. <laughs> That's really funny. That makes That's sense. Funny. That makes perfect sense that they couldn't get a control group. They could not. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Boys, I think you might have a problem. <laughs> yes, but as this study is perhaps going to inform us, it also explains that perhaps the males of society are boosting their brain power more so than women by all this aggressive video game play. Research right. discovered that those who mm -hmm. played StarCraft were quicker and more accurate in performing cognitive flexibility tasks than those who played The Sims. Dr. Brian Glass from Queen Mary School of uh, Biological and Chemical Sciences says, Previous research has demonstrated that action video games, such as Halo, can speed up decision-making, but the current work finds that real-time strategy games can promote our ability to think on the fly and learn from past mistakes. Our paper shows that cognitive flexibility, a cornerstone of human intelligence, is not a static trait, but can be trained and improved using fun learning tools, like gaming. <laughs> Professor Brad Love from UCL says, Cognitive flexibility varies across people at different ages. For example, a fictional character like Sherlock Holmes has the ability to simultaneously engage in multiple aspects of thought and mentally shift in response to changing goals and environmental conditions. Creative problem solving and thinking outside of the box require cognitive flexibility. Perhaps in contrast to the repetitive nature of work in past centuries, the modern knowledge economy places a premium on cognitive flexibility. Dr. Glass added, the volunteers who played the most complex version of the video game performed the best in the post-game psychological tests. We need to understand now what exactly about these games is leading to these changes and whether these cognitive boosts are permanent or if they dwindle over time. I mean, mm -hmm. you just quit playing video games and you become an idiot. <laughs> That's gonna... Right. So once well, we... well, Wait, I would, well, I would think... Once, we, once we have that understanding, it w could become possible to develop clinical interventions for symptoms related to attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or traumatic brain injuries as an example of some of the ways this could be in the future. I like the idea that, that, well, of course, how funny it is that they couldn't find any males right. who didn't already play this many video games. But could it be, ladies, that your male counterparts are getting a mental advantage? No. Out no. Of and this is why. <laughs> it just depends. I'll tell you exactly why. So you yeah. have your, you have your, your uptick of, of your effectiveness at decision making and it's going to curb off after a certain point. Yeah. No matter how many video games you play and how much you play, it's, you're not going to gain any more after that. Then you also you have get better forever. your <laughs> social <laughs> interactions well. and your abilities to make decisions in real life and those are going to go down the more <laughs> video games you play. I'm completely serious. Well, and so at some point there's an apex where you can get the highest of both. Mm -hmm. And that's where people need to be. Unfortunately, I think people who actually play these games are probably not anywhere near that region of the graph. Okay. I don't well, think anyone plays StarCraft for, what did they say, two hours a week. I don't think anybody does that. Right, but they did also point out that the more complicated uh, and difficult versions of the game that were played, the better the people did at the cognitive test, which could lead you to assume that playing more complicated, the more you play the more you need a more complicated game to play to keep your interest, the more you're increasing your brain power through playing Yeah, I mean, you can, you can continue to strengthen connections, to strengthen pathways that are already there. You can um, also, probably by d doing this kind of um, activity, you're probably actually increasing the white matter in your brain, which would be synapses, so strengthening actually creating new little tiny synaptic spikes and making new connections that would make those pathways even more uh, efficient, which would allow your cognitive processing to happen more quickly, more uh, more energy eff effectively, whatever. So that Blair's right, there's definitely going to be 
a plateau at some Definitely. point, What's or that? there will be it'll be like an asymptote where What's you can the get, study? you'll I get you'll start it. getting diminishing returns. So that how do you know this? You're just assuming because our brains have a maximum capacity. We have we are limited by volume. Oh. By mass and volume, and it, I mean, it's not as though your brain is going to continue to go blah, 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 and just like grow out your ears. Well, I, I don't. Think You're not going to get like all sorts of ears, crazy but... new infolding in your brain as a result of this. You know, no, but isn't it? It's not about folds adding your brain. folding. But are we talking about just wiring the brain to be able to make connections between between things and do decision making in a fast right? But basis. it's not going to be an infinitely. You're not just going to you know. You, it, it'll be diminishing returns after a Okay, well, point maybe it's right diminishing so why, We don't need to, yeah, well, we don't need to argue is, that point. I would, I would, but this is the part that this, they don't know, and they mentioned in the study, is they don't know how long it lasts. So the idea is, is right. it something like a an athletic thing? Like, yeah, I could run a mile in X amount of five minutes once upon a time, but if I did it today, maybe it would take me an hour. Like, Because <laughs> like, I haven't run for a while. Like, right, exactly. That, Use it or it lose practice? it. Your yeah. your your body is going to uh, is going to give energy and give resources to the stuff that you're using. So if you are putting your brain under cognitive demands in these simulated environment, video game environments, resource resources are going to go to your neurons to help make you better because your brain doesn't know the difference between real life and the video game. So your it's brain not about really the doesn't know the turns. It's about sustaining the the games that you made. Potentially. Uh, potentially. I mean, I think it's both. It's both also. It, it's both because you'll have diminishing returns as to how efficient you can become and how much cognitive uh, improvement you can have. And then you will also have how long is that going to last? How Do you have to keep playing video games for the rest of your life and doing highly cognitively demanding um, activities that are relevant to that uh -huh. to that kind and of a game to maintain it right. or if you stop is it like uh, muscle deterioration where you stop exercising your muscles atrophy right. um, they don't get resources anymore that's probably what happens in the brain as well so I would imagine over some amount of time it does decay and that you would have to exercise your brain again in order to get those um, get those pathways back but because your brain has already done that once before it can probably get back to it more easily mm -hmm. than if you're just doing it for the first time because your brain has already kind of pushed yeah. those pathways in that direction. Yeah, so um, elasticity and, is there and already. And then yeah. elasticity is already there. And so we have plasticity, we have elasticity, right. Right. <laughs> and we've got the... Uh, the question of you know what kind of activity are you doing so we know that doing a crossword you're only going to be getting better at doing a crossword you're not going to be really getting cognitive your, your brain is right. not getting all sorts of cognitive demands that are challenging your attention and the way that you pay you, the, what you're doing in the world challenging all of your senses and so mm -hmm. exercising going for a run is much better for your brain and for your for cognitive strengthening than just sitting and doing a, cro a crossword puzzle. So, and I would imagine in the same way, playing one of these video games is right up there with exercise because you're challenging your brain as if you were out in an, you know, a real environment and having to deal with attackers and predators and choices and decisions. And so another way to, to look at the potential of the diminishing routine turns and the sustaining the thing is, once you've built this appetite for having a lot of information and making these connections and doing things, then maybe your appetite for entertainment changes. Maybe you go into a sciencey podcast and want to hear about some more challenging information. I w I'd actually be interested to find out how many listeners of the show enjoy video games. You know, it's. I bet the guys. It's probably what they they probably can't find. That many of you don't play two hours a week already. I doubt, I would doubt that playing a video game for any length of time would really change your interests in science and technology from what they were previously unless they are offering you information in, about those things in a way that will start to make them more appealing to you because just making your brain better at handling decisions and make and and sorting out what's happening in your in your environment more quickly uh, that's not going to make you all of a sudden want to want to 
do science or no history. Or, no, no, I mean, no. But it might make it. So, it might make it so that um, seeing something that you recognize and you've seen before, like a formulaic sitcom or something of that nature, might not be as appealing. I mean, I could see that. I could see that. I think that's part of why. At least I think that's what part of why people who I know who are really then. Uh, more educated, won't sit through a typical network sitcom from beginning to end. It's just too boring. Mm. Yeah. But I don't know if that mm. has anything to do with the education that they had or, you know, that's just I think the kind there's of it's a chicken. It's a chicken and the egg question. I mean, you, you're not going to be able to, I mean, yeah. we can Breaking. hypothesize yeah. and opinionate all we want, but I don't think we're going to. Video games make you smarter, though. We did learn that today. Mm, that is not what we learned at all. <laughs> That's not what we learned. <laughs> oh, no. That's not the takeaway? It made Blair, you, can, can, it made you Blair, faster you at this? making decisions. Yeah. yeah. But they didn't say whether it was the right decision. Where did they say um, that they made the right decision? Exactly. That just means you press <gasps> that button faster. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. They weren't doing a reflex test. They were doing a cognitive flexibility test. So yeah, basically yeah. they were testing they critical a thinking. They didn't say whether it was the right decision. They didn't say whether it was the morally they didn't sound say it decision. Was faster. They said they, they got just... high they re they ranked higher on a on a cognitive flexibility test, which I would yeah. assume means they got more complex questions and they came up with the right answer and maybe quicker, I don't think but it didn't say right anything answer. about speed. I don't think it's a right answer. I think it's just an answer. Okay. Yeah. All right, we won't, we'll get into this in the after show. I'll just, I'll, in the after show, I'm going to ask Blair if she had a boyfriend once that played way too many video games and ignored her. Because she seems to be. Who hasn't? <laughs> who hasn't? Seriously. In this day and age, who hasn't? Think, as, as somebody who, who plays and appreciates yeah. video games, you know, it's. It, I, I, yeah. I'm just not going to go no, any further, I, I but every once in a while, it's the... I'm just saying, know. yeah, I don't think it necessarily... I did a story not too long ago about how people who had played first-person shooter games were more likely in a practical test to aim for the head. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> yeah. They also have better vision. But still, Which, I'm most saying... Most of vision happens in the brain, so yeah. what they're doing is strengthening the visual the pathways. Making themselves yeah. smarter. Or I'm making the brain it's, more powerful at it's, receiving it's making, information like in the we were world. talking about plasticity yeah. and elasticity. It's a workout for the brain that yeah. doesn't necessarily make you smarter. Well, yeah, I think having a better brain puts you in a better position to be smarter. If your vision's so, better, it puts you in a better position. Critical definitely. Critical thinking's better. All right. Anyway, so you let's, hear just, about start, let's just start at the genetic levels. Like yeah. Sure. Better brains through genetic modification. There we go. What you do with Blair. That yes. This is this week in science, everybody, and it's time for Blair's Animal Corner with Blair. Works at an aquarium, I think. Yes. Very <laughs> I think. Found of hippos. Yes. But not so much of pandas or squirrels. No. Exactly. So, uh, we had Shark Week recently, not too long ago, just a couple weeks ago, as we all know, those of us in the scientific community, and so I learned a lot about sharks in my new job, and so I was very interested to see this story about tiger shark attacks in Hawaii. So tiger sharks are one of the three sharks considered, quote-unquote, dangerous to humans. The tiger shark, do you guys know the other two? Are the types of sharks are dangerous to humans? Yeah. Well, I think the, the great, great white, white and great white leopard from... sharks, bull sharks, bull sharks. Hey, are, that's yeah. not nice. She was just guessing. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm my so anyway, headphone. the tiger sharks are one of the three considered dangerous to humans because they will occasionally attack people. Do you guys know how many people die every year from shark attack? Seven. Somewhere between eight and ten. I was close. So it's not many. That being said, there are quite a few shark attacks, not in the matter of hundreds, in the matter of tens every year. And most of the time they don't lead to death because sharks don't want to eat people. It's not on the menu at all. So anywho, getting back to that. In Hawaii, tiger sharks occasionally attack people. Most of the time it's considered to be the person's fault because the swimmers are not cautious and they don't stay out of the way of these sharks that they go, oh, look at that shark, and they go right up to this shark, and it's a problem. So 
Anyway, there has been an unprecedented spike in overall shark attacks since the start of 2012 in Hawaii. And so um, the Hawaii Department of Land and Natural Resources claim that it is completely safe to swim in the waters of Hawaii still as long as you are cautious and aware of your surroundings. But there are more sharks in these waters and there are more people in these waters. The question is, are there physically more sharks or are there more sharks swimming up close to the beaches of Hawaii? What's happening here? And what they're seeing is there have been eight attacks statewide and 10 in 2012. Hawaii usually sees three to four attacks a year and saw one or zero attacks in 11 years between 1980 and 2012. There are not a lot of shark attacks, but already this year they, there have been eight. That's insane. A 20-year-old German tourist lost her arm in an attack last week, and I believe she actually died this morning, which is very sad. Mm -hmm. And four days after that, a 16-year-old surfer suffered injuries to both legs after he was bit by a shark. And there have been four shark attacks in the last month. This is crazy. This is really weird. And so now what they're going to do is they're starting to catch, tag, and track these tiger sharks. They want to see why these sharks are here and, like I said, if there's just physically more of them or if they're just somewhere that they're not used to being. Now, as an outsider looking in on this, there's a few things to keep in mind. The tiger shark, part of the reason they're so dangerous, they have these gnarly teeth that are used mostly for biting into sea turtles. Mm. Now, what's happening with that sea turtle populations? Strong, sharp teeth. Yeah. <laughs> sea turtle populations dropping pretty drastically. Their food's hmm. disappearing. Maybe they're looking for some new food sources, not humans, because like I said, sharks don't want to eat us. We don't have enough calories in us. Not fatty enough. Right. We know, and we know, do we know that the tiger shark populations are it's staying the same or well, not? Well, that's what they're trying to figure out right now. They're trying to figure not out if the up. populations are increasing or mm -hmm. if they're just going places that we're not used to seeing them. It could be either, we're not sure, which is why they're doing this tagging, tracking study. But so, their food is decreasing, we know this, because they eat turtles and we're losing turtles. Mm -hmm. Climate change is causing current shifts, and when that happens, yeah. food sources move. Yeah. And sharks end up in different places. Sharks end up in different places. Mm -hmm. they Plus, follow the food. like they were saying earlier in this article, there is a lot more tourists in the waters of Hawaii than there used to be. A lot. Every year there's more people snorkeling and scubaing in these waters. So there's a lot of things to look at here. Mm -hmm. One thing's for sure, we know tigers haven't gone on a human attacking spree. Tiger shark, excuse me, haven't gone on a human attacking spree. We know that's not what it is. Yeah. There's something going on. It's not a Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> Something's happening that's mm -hmm. making these tiger sharks change their behavior. And it, I think this is fantastic because, of course, historically, if you looked back 20, even 20 years ago, the response to this would have been a massive shark hunt. Right, and now researchers are just trying to figure out what's going yes. on and cover, uncover the underlying issue. That's right. And yeah. I just want to say, again, we talked about this a little while ago, I think during Shark Week. I just want to reiterate, even with this quote-unquote spike in shark attacks, more people die every year from cow attacks and more people die every year from vending machine accidents. than they And more, more people die from uh, human well, more people are killed by humans than by anything. Else. Way more. Lots way more. more. Yeah. But I think uh, it's great that despite this weird change in shark behavior, people mm -hmm. aren't running out and hunting a bunch of sharks down. They're instead tagging and tracking. Fantastic. So the, the first thing I would I would investigate in trying to determine why this is happening is I would uh, I would be, I would do a monitoring of the tributaries that are coming from inland out of uh, the fresh water. This, uh, this is the one thing I learned from the Hawaiian natives who were saying what days to and to not to go out uh, into the water. They said, really avoid rainy days. 
uh, if it's raining because if you're anywhere, if there's any tributaries with, you know, freshwater creek coming from inland heading out into the ocean, you, there's chickens and livestock and stuff and, you know, they're just kind of kick back, lay back farmers, whatever. You get the rains, it sort of chums the water naturally and it brings them in closer to the shores during those periods. So one thing that, to sort of see is has something changed with the tributaries? Is it maybe there's so many more people that they've loaded up with more chickens? Is the tributaries sending out these uh, these little hints of coming, there might be food here if you come uh, near the, nearer to the shore. Yeah, someone in the chat room suggested that it's the obesity epidemic. It's <laughs> you know, maybe it's the leftovers <laughs> yeah. from the sushi Suddenly restaurant. Suddenly they say, oh, these, these humans are, are more blubbery than they used That's to be. Right. It's delicious. That's right. More energy. More <laughs> An acquired energy. taste, finally. Yeah, yeah. that could be too. Yes. Yeah, so anyway. That's sharks. And do you want to hear about a dog sh saving a cat real quick? Because I do like this story. Yeah. Yes. Feel good story, please. All right. Traditional animal rivalries were set aside in New Zealand when a dog's blood was used to save the life of a poisoned cat in a rare interspecies transfusion. Huh? Yeah. Wild. So Kit... Cat owner Kim Edwards was frantic last Friday when her ginger Tom Rory went limp after eating rat poison. She oh. rushed him to a local veterinary clinic. He was fading fast and they needed immediate transfusion, but there was not enough time to send a sample to lab for testing to determine his blood type. Instead, she took a gamble and used dog blood that was on hand to save the animal, oh knowing gosh. that it would instantly kill the cat if it was the wrong blood type. Well, the cat was dying anyway. So. Exactly. So there was a, a black lab on the premises. They used the black lab as a blood donor. And miraculously, he turned it around. He sa it saved his life. This cat survived. Crazy. Yeah. Dog blood. I wonder... Yeah, I mean, I know. I, I just wonder what kind of uh, factors are in the blood that, you know, I mean, obviously there wasn't a uh, an immune response mm -mm. to the dog blood, so the cat is fine, and it's just blood yeah. type that they're dealing with as a as and a dogs mammal. and cats in terms of the species are so different from one another. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't understand how this is possible. Is it? Is it? Do they have blood types like we have blood types? Are they the same scale of blood types? Is it a? I think they're pretty similar. Could we be using dog That's, blood for transfusion? That is what I'm wondering. Like right now. Right? Can we be like harvesting cow blood to so we never have a deficiency in in, in you know? I know. Blood that's banks? Like, that's the first thing I thought star? about. Is how do I, we how have a blood shortage? Yeah. If there's interspecies transfusion. That's possible, possible right? Huh. I don't know. Mm. This needs study now. I'm very curious. I feel like yeah. this yeah. knowledge probably exists. It's got to be those, somewhere. One of those things that's like, it's wild because it's like one of those never thought of it. Never thought, never even like, why can't we, never even occurred to me, oh, why can't we use cow blood instead of just human? Because it's already so tricky from just one human to another getting it right that, hmm. I know, isn't it? I don't. I don't Future know. Best, um, maybe next week's Blair's Animal Corner can tell. Uh, can, can report back <laughs> what yeah, blood I made a note. I will look. information. I, I made so, a note, and I'm going to do some research. That's a, on this that's a good story. So, according, just doing a quick search, according to yeah. WiseGeek.com, they say at least in theory, interspecies blood transfusions would be possible, but only after the donor's blood went through an extraordinary extraordinarily complicated process to remove all possible antigens and foreign bodies. Mm -hmm. By the time interspecies blood transfusions became viable, viable enough for the recipient, the cost would be pr prohibitively expensive, mm -hmm. and there would still be a risk of serious illness or death. It's not to say that they've never been attempted. Uh, human patients were subjected to transfusions of sheep blood back in the 17th century. Whoa! Some people recovered, and they say, and this article says most likely in spite of the procedure. Um, mm. The rest of the patients died because of allergic reactions. 
um, or incompatible blood donations. Uh, uh, basically, there's been a halt to the practice. Uh, ABO blood typing system has helped scientists understand the basic difficulty of interspecies blood transfusions and finding um, animal blood contains a number of antigens and antibodies that would be instantly intact, attacked by a human's immune system. And even primates with a 1% genetic difference from humans still have too many factors hmm. different to make it possible. So it's hmm. interesting that the dog-cat transfusion worked because yeah. that doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, wait, where was this story? Wait, where, where's, where did this story take place? New Zealand. New Zealand. Oh, so it's probably make it yet. What? Yeah, no real news comes out of New Zealand. What? It's... <laughs> It's possible it's always there are a slow news day there. There are, and there are stories that pop up in the internet that are just people trying to have fun. But if this is yeah. the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, so it's yeah, it's Australia. It's brought new. Okay, Australia is. It, I, I'll stop now. We'll find out. We can <laughs> find out. It's always. But a Justin, slow news the day article in has quotes. I know. <laughs> I know. True. Google any of them. You'll get a blank stare from your from your Google. Oh my goodness. This is yeah, ABC Online, the Epoch Times, and Sky News. Uh rawstory.com. Uh, it's, but it's Telegraph not like, picked it up. Right. It's not it this is Dog Saves Cat is is replacing what next week will be, you know Family's dog gives birth to seven puppies. What will they do? Like it's one of those the fuzzy little filler I story. Even have this, towards the end. I can't even. Have I don't this. think it's a filler. Story. Interesting. No it's, no, it's headline news if you're in New Zealand, but all news in New Zealand is pretty much make it up because nothing ever what? happens there. What? Okay, so there is there is an article published in the it's Journal of Feline right? Medicine nothing and Surgery happened. from 2012, a year ago, September 2012, titled Xenotransfusion with Canine Blood in the Feline Species Review of the Literature. And unfortunately, I do not have access to this, uh, to Sage Journals where this is listed, uh, but there is a review article, a scientific review somewhere out there that if anyone has access to it, it would be great to hear what the review says. Because hmm. that's that's science. It's not this one particular story right. coming out of yes, the news. Definitely. And we can actually see what the science behind it is. Yeah, And so not that rely on Fox News. Yes. Mm. So this is, yeah, I'm looking at the original article in the New Zealand Herald. Um, and it looks, I mean, it looks legit. Who, yeah, it probably is legit, and but I, I would love to. I, I think if you, Blair, if you can do more research, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I have will. I'll definitely do aquarium. more research. Yeah, I'll look. But looking for articles and actual scientific stuff to back it up would be really cool. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna look into this for next week. It awesome. yeah, it just sounds. You're 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 Australia bashing a little bit, Justin. It's, it's and it's, it's New Zealand. They're not even the same. Mm-hmm. No, no, New Zealand, it's its own autonomous, sort of beautiful, <laughs> but... Re, it's just According a, to this story, they talked to the Animal Blood Bank, and that the blood bank said that it occasionally is done, but it is not common. How is, yep. how is, how is New Zealand big enough to even have an Animal Blood Bank? <laughs> Shh! Like, it's, Zip it. It's just, just, what? You know, some, some Tasmanian devils need a... A transfusion. No, you know how it goes. It's, no, it's, it's, it's New Zealand. You know, it's where they shot the Hobbit great... because everything looked like this nobody lived there. Okay. Because nobody All lived right. there. Great. Okay. This okay. is a great funny, funny time conversation. Let's take a break. Yeah. Let's we'll be right back with more of This Week in Science in just a few moments. That's right. Man, and everybody down is with a yellow tan. His name is Dad, I'm such a fan. I was a dreamer, 
Audible.com is a leading provider of audiobooks with over 100,000 titles in their library. It's a lot of titles and it's growing all the time because people keep writing and then they keep reading their books and then you have more stuff to listen to. Audiobooks are fantastic because you can download them and take them with you and just, you know, makes your life convenient and easy and happy and you don't have to strain your eyes. It's wonderful that way. Audible has uh, worked out a wonderful system where you can sign up for their service and get a free audiobook download. That's right, you sign up and you get a free download. It's that easy. Sign up, give them a little information. I mean, what is privacy these days anyway? Get one free audiobook download of your choice. Try something science-y like, I don't know, that's some somebody's interesting book. I'm sure there's something. I'm looking around my office right now trying to find a book to suggest, but I'm having issues. Um, download a book. Get a free one. Audiblepodcast.com slash twist. It's audiblepodcast.com slash twist. Go there right now. Sign up. Get your free book and help Twiss out in the process. Makes us all feel good. If you like twists, you can also support us by buying our merchandise. We have lots of t-shirts and sweatshirts and things that you might enjoy if you head over to our website, twist.org, and look for the Zazzle store link up in the menu bar. You get over there, Zazzle store, buy stuff, lots of swag. We have holidays coming up in a few months. I know you don't want to think about it right now, but they are coming, and so gifts will be expected. You should, you know, you can spread the love of twists. At Twistmas. Give Twist at Twistmas. Go to twist.org. That Zazzle store is waiting for you. Additionally, Twist is supported by listeners like you, and your donations allow us to do everything that we do. They pay for our hosting and our bandwidth and contractors we need to hire when we need to get things done. Fun things that we try to do. We appreciate any amount that you're able to give five dollars to five hundred thousand dollars we will take it and we will really appreciate what you have done for us we accept donations through paypal so go to the website twist.org and look for pink donation paypal buttons all over our website there's some on the right right uh, sidebar of the website there are also pink buttons at the bottom of every show page so if you go to the website click on the most recent episode listen to it browse through the show notes, give some comments, and click one of those pink buttons and donate. We really appreciate your donations. We really couldn't do this without you. Thank you for your support. And we're back with more this week in science. Yo, science is in the his house. So let's see, what else do we want to talk about? Copper causing Alzheimer's? What? Oh, no, please, that's my, yes. one of my favorite min minerals ever. Please. <laughs> I know, copper. We love copper. copper. And normally, a, copper, the metal, is... It is present in our bloodstream and in our cells in very low quantities normally. Um, but recent research out of the University of Rochester published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science shows that exposing the brain to copper promotes production of amyloid beta proteins that are found in the brains of people suffering from Alzheimer's. And it, it keeps the brain from being able to clear the plaques out. So the plaques, the amyloid beta is like a, gets to be like a clumpy little protein and they, they clump together and they form these plaques and those gum up the works of neurons and don't allow them to function properly anymore. And the brain does have mechanisms, the cells do have mechanisms to clean those things out. But somehow copper is uh, cu accumulating uh, to keep that from happening. And I do remember a long, this is interesting because I do remember several years ago uh, talking about prion disease and the like, like Crutzfeldt-Jacobs 
disease, scrapey, mad cow, um, that the, the prions in the little proteins that get misfolded, that they in normal functioning, when they're not misfolded, had something to do with being uh, copper channels or co uh, channels for copper to flow through or that there was something involved in, um, yeah, in, Whoa. in copper metabolism. Huh in the brain cells with prions. So this is this I think is really interesting that this, that this has come forward. Um, so what the researchers have uh, have found, they say, quote, it is clear that over time copper, copper's cumulative effect is to impair the systems by which amyloid beta is removed from the brain. This impairment is one of the key factors that cause the protein to accumulate in the brain and form the plaques that are the hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. So copper, where is it found? It's found in red meats, shellfish, nuts, seeds, and tap water that's carried in copper pipes. So if you live in an older house with uh, copper pipes, um, you're probably getting a lot of copper. And copper uh -oh. can get through the blood-brain barrier, which is part of the issue here. Huh. So copper pipes, and then what was the other stuff that you said? Seeds? <laughs> seeds, yeah. Seeds, nuts, shellfish, red meats. And that's what? not all. That's that's not complete uh, a complete list of everything copper's oh. in, but what? pretty common foods. <laughs> and it's not it. Copper is a part of you know natural functioning and the body. Right. It's, no, it's probably a very uh, it. You know you don't want it to accumulate or to get to high concentrations. It's kind of the the way that you don't want to eat too much tuna these days because you right. don't want mercury to build up in your system. Right. Um, and so there's probably something going on in but this way that... why do seeds that have a lot? Seeds have I don't know why seeds so, have so a lot. So before we go too far down, <laughs> down this speculation, yeah, this, this study's speculation, uh, February 17th of uh, 2013, Science Daily story, researchers at the Birchall Center, Keeley University, Staffordshire, UK, have provided unequivocal evidence that under conditions which are approximately similar to those found in the brain, copper can only protect against beta amyloid forming beta sheets, and as such is highly unlikely that copper is directly involved in the formation of senile plaques and Alzheimer's disease. How interesting. So, so when was this when was that study from again? I don't know when the study is. This is the this is the report here is from February seventeenth, twenty thirteen on the Science so Daily really website. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. the research was published by Nature's online journal Scientific Reports. Hmm. May it may also imply that lower levels of copper in the brain may promote the mechanisms whereby beta amyloid is deposited as senile plaques in Alzheimer's disease. This research address the ongoing question as to whether copper in the brain contributes to the formation of the senile plaques and Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. I mean, it's Alzheimer's, but it's still, it's, it's, you're, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it's like, too little, too much. One way right, and we don't, and we don't know exactly, and there is no link that they have shown between, you know, eating lots of, uh, right. Copper rich foods right. and that leading to Alzheimer's. That is not what right. they're showing in this study. Right. All that they have shown is that uh, exposing brain cells to copper leads to the pro production of this amyloid, or that it there when cells are exposed to copper, there is an increase in production of amyloid betas. But that but they haven't actually linked the two directly together there we don't know a mechanism for this so the the study from earlier than uh, this year that should definitely be taken into account and um, and it could also be that there are some individuals that m might have uh, maybe a misformed uh, channel protein in their uh, their cell membranes maybe they have something a little bit different that makes them more susceptible to um, uh, build, allowing them to build copper to, for copper to build up in their cells. Um, yeah, so there's no there's there's no like direct link at this point in time. So it is being stressed that you don't have don't dramatically mm -hmm. reduce your consumption of nuts and seeds and other things right. because you're concerned about this because they really don't know enough yet at but all. Yeah, and that information is 
three steps away from the information that they figured out in this study, right? I mean, because yeah. all they did is they figured out that a buildup in copper is seen when you see changes that cause Alzheimer's, right? So there's a correlation yeah. there. And then they're making the giant leap from we see copper buildups and, oh, this is where there's copper in your environment that you're consuming or it's getting into your body, right? It's kind of a yeah. big leap to say that the copper in your brain is coming from eating seeds and nuts. Yeah, and it's probably not. But it might be coming from the drugs you're doing. Yeah, so this significance... Is, oh, a, that was, that was drugs that you're doing. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, so from the actual, uh, the actual paper, there's a, a significance paragraph at the top of the, uh, the PNAS uh, page where it says the causes of the sporadic form of Alzheimer's disease are unknown. In this study, we show that copper critically regulates low density lipoprotein receptor related protein 1 mediated alpha uh, amyloid beta clearance across the blood brain barrier in normal mice. So, copper critically regulates amyloid beta clearance across the blood brain barrier in normal mice. Mm -hmm. Faulty amyloid beta clearance across the blood brain barrier, barrier due to increased copper levels in the aging brain vessels may lead to accumulation of neurotoxic amyloid beta in brains. In a mouse model of Alzheimer's disease, low levels of copper also influenced amyloid beta production and neuroinflammation. And so mm -hmm. they suggest that copper may also increase the severity of Alzheimer's disease. Mm. Interesting. But, and, yeah. and the, More and study the, needed. And the pills that you're taking to combat Alzheimer's may include copper. Mm. Yeah, really? So the first time in more than 100 years, drug and dietary supplement manufacturers are updating the test used to ensure that their products contain safe levels of metal impurities. The stringent new requirements... Uh, instruments and costs are the topic of the cover story of the current edition of Chemical and Engineering News. So this is uh, Ann Thaler, uh, the Chemical and Engineering News senior correspondent, explains that in 1905, nonprofit standard setting U.S. Pharmacopoeal Convention first introduced a method for checking medicines for arsenic, mercury, and other heavy metals, which could be harmful to health. That method is the one we're using today. After almost 20 years of discussion, wow, these people need to play some video games so they can make some decisions. After almost 20 years of discussion, they published new limits on 15 such impurities and procedures for measuring the levels. Uh, implementation has been delayed. Makers of the instruments needed uh, for the new tests are working on with drug companies to prepare the new era of monitoring. Depending on the number of products to be analyzed, drug companies may need to install multiple systems at multiple sites, and some large companies have dozens of sites globally. Each could require one testing system costing somewhere in the neighborhood of $150,000, which is a lot if you were going to have one of these at home testing your vitamins and your, and your pharmaceuticals, but not that much money to a large pharmaceutical company. But interesting that uh, that uh, the system that they've had in place <laughs> has been the same one for a hundred and eight years. That's great. Not that, that not that we didn't get it right. Not that they didn't nail it. You know, a hundred and something years ago. But yeah, um, it probably could have been updated at some point and improved a little bit since then. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. So, Blair, did you want to uh, talk about speed limits and birds? Yeah. Uh, do you want to start? <laughs> no, go ahead. Okay. You go. Okay. Um, so, two biologists from Canada working in France found that birds that land on roads adapt to average highway speeds. The higher the speed limit, the sooner they take flight when a car approaches. And so basically the assumption was that when you see a bird and you're driving down the road, the birds look over, they attempt to gauge the speed, and then they take flight just before you arrive in your car so that you don't hit the bird. That was the assumption. It, it seems that way. That's what we assumed. Yeah. Is the, the bird looks the over. Of, 
Oh, it's getting closer. Oh, it's getting closer. Oh, it's getting closer. I better take off. Time to go. The number of smashed pigeons in San yeah. Francisco make me wonder about the skills of some individuals. Right. Yeah. So this is uh, yeah. This is this makes sense. They're just really good at judging the speed of an oncoming object and know yeah. when to move out of the way. Which, I, being I, birds that fun. have to catch things while they're flying, they need to know relative speeds. That makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. This new study suggests that they instead take note on how fast cars travel over many days, weeks, or months and build a memory map based on the average speed of such vehicles in a certain location. At a certain time even. So would they I mean right. would they be judging differently like you know the morning traffic? We know those those guys are going really fast because they're trying to get to work. In the evening, it's a little more relaxed. I would assume yes. It didn't go into that much temporal variables in here. It just okay. location variables mostly is what they discussed in the article. But I'd assume that, yeah, you're exactly right, that they're actually looking at location and other variables like time of day. And so what they do is when they see a car coming, they go through the data in their brain and use that, some sort of speed limit, some sort of average speed on that road to decide when to fly away when the car is approaching. <laughs> so what they did is they took a stopwatch, and they measured how much time birds took to take off from a roadway ahead as they drove, and then they stopped to measure the distance traveled, then they set about changing their speed relative to the speed limit, sometimes driving under and sometimes driving over, and they tested the birds on different roads with different limits. They found that the birds studied did not try to guess how fast an individual car was traveling, but instead relied on average speed estimates they learned from observing traffic patterns on right. different okay. roads. So they didn't leave yeah. faster when yeah. the faster car was coming, and no. they left way too soon when the slower car was coming. Right. Wow. Yeah, but but if they were in a different if if the same bird were on different roads with different speed limits, then that change bird would their, would yeah. change their behavior. Right, based yeah. on the different road with the different speed limit. Huh. Yeah, exactly. They mm -hmm. also found that the birds tended to take flight earlier if they were standing in the middle rather than off to the side, maybe because they expect the car to move and they were waiting for the car to move. I don't mm -hmm. know. I can't get in the bird's brain and say exactly why. That kind of threw me for a curveball. I don't understand why being in the middle of the road would change things. But anyway, it's closer to the car. I don't know. I don't know. I don't but know. essentially, they're they know the speed limit. The birds. Mm -hmm. They learn the speed limit, which is yeah. Just this was weird over twenty species awesome. too. This is a bunch of different birds. Wow. This is oh one type goodness. of bird. Huh. This is twenty species that they looked at. Well, I, I, I love the idea that what they're doing is the birds are have learned a rule and that they've learned that humans, you know, this other animal in the environment, the car, um, has different behavior on different roads. They don't read the signs. They don't know that mm -hmm. the, the animal in their environment is behaving that way because it's, it, the human driver is... Uh, reading a sign, but they're over time learning a rule that certain places average a certain speed. Right. And so they can respond a certain way, and that is going to make their life more efficient, their mm -hmm. decision-making process. Exactly. And I love this. The very last line of the article says, this suggests most collisions with birds on road roadways come about due to drivers exceeding the seed speed limit, catching the birds by surprise. So if you want a reason why you should not speed, yeah. it's to save birds. You're going to hit the poor <laughs> birds. They're not expecting you to go that fast. Yeah. Save huh. some birds. Slow down. Mm -hmm. Try not to go splat. Yep. Um, I have one final story yeah. if you guys are interested. Yes, uh, please. <laughs> some... Some new risk, new research out of the lab of Katsuhiko Hayashi. Um, this is a biologist who has developed a, a way of turning mouse skin cells into either eggs or sperm. So it doesn't oh. matter whether or not the skin came from a male mouse or a female mouse. That skin 
can turn into eggs or sperm. Wow. Ah, uh, wha oh, what? <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting. What? So, and they go on the um, the germ cell, they're calling them primordial germ cell-like cells, and they get transplanted into, so it, like stem cells, but they're not just, stem cells turn into, or pluripotent can turn into any um, any cell in the body. These will specifically go on to become germ cell, germ cells, which are the sex cells in the body. He took the so, primordial germ cell, they're called germ cell-like cells, transplanted them into either ovaries or into testes, and then the, they went on to become eggs and sperm that made viable babies. Um, and those well, viable babies, were they clones? No, they uh, were they no, were they gametes, were right? Clones. So they only had half yeah. of a set. But half this is my set, question. Yeah. So if you took a skin cell from a female mouse and you injected it into the testes of a male mouse, like in this process that you're explaining, mm -hmm. you'd end up with an XX inside, well, you'd only end up with half, though. It'd be haploid. So it wouldn't matter because okay. half of the sperm cells have an X anyway. Yeah, so there are certain wow, genes that, makes that are sense. responsible. There, yeah, but there are certain genes that are responsible for the developmental pathway of the germ cells. Right. So whether or not they become sperm or eggs is determined by certain genes getting turned on or turned off, right? And so mm -hmm. this guy has figured out, in the mouse at least, what ge what genes are responsible for sending them down either pathway. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, they work... <laughs> they so, wait, I'm still Nobody confused. else, is though. This other what, how a female cell can turn into a male gamete? Because I didn't understand that either, but it makes no, perfect sense now that but, I think about it. But that means I couldn't have a baby with myself. You could. I could. You could. But then you could. with that baby with myself, I mean, I, this is what I was that thinking. That would be, you have to have a surrogate. It would well, be a clone, no, sure, and you sure. have to have a surrogate. No, but, it, and it wouldn't even but, necessarily be a clone, because you it, have okay. two sets of chromosomes. And so you yeah. potentially oh, have right. some recessive genes that are masked by dominant genes. And you could, by just the chance of things, end up with two recessives in this baby that you're making out of two different gametes. And then you could end up with a different, it wouldn't be a clone of you. Not, ex blue not an exact person. genetic clone, but it right. would be a clone in the sense that all of the stuff came from right. you. Right, right. Yeah. It would all be your original material, but it wouldn't necessarily, yeah, it wouldn't be the same chromosomes exactly that you have. Interesting. Yeah. It would be a different so that, combination. So in the future, we, can, we don't need to date anymore to have a family even. We don't even need a partner. We could just make our own baby. Yeah, so... Um, some caveats awesome. to this research. <laughs> caveats <laughs> to the research. Um, this is only in mice. It hasn't been done in humans yet. How the, however, they are starting to focus on um, on this research in humans, and they've started working on human um, induced pluripotent stem cells right. using the same genes that were um, are important in the mouse germ cell development. Um, Aren't so, Laura? That's an interesting question, though. Sorry, I'm getting stuck on this one thing. But, but I have to say one one additional thing is other yeah, labs have tried to re tried to replicate their research and none of them have been able to get viable <gasps> embryos. Oh, oh, oh snap! Oh. <laughs> um, but so my question is, could you end up with a Y chromosome in an egg that way? I oh. suppose it's possible, right? Ah, that hurts me. I, it, it, I think that would be possible. And then, as Aaron Lore is asking in the chat room, you could potentially end up with a YY. Right. Isn't oh. that Which would that'd be possible? Not be, well, because probably, yeah. But I don't just, do. I mean, YY happens occasionally anyway. I mean, we have. Um, I'm trying to remember what the different um, irregular genotypes are. There are um, occasionally you end up with XXY. XXY. Yeah. You have um, uh, there. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know how you can end up with a, with a YY but... though, because 
the female only has two X's to give. But it would be, I mean, I think every once in a while what you have is... Oh, there'd be is, a weird mutation. Uh, yeah, or you have an egg that probably has a Y in it somehow. Ah. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That's but weird. I yeah, I don't... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, pl I'd have, I have to go back and review this stuff. I'm not really strong. Uh, okay. Why, why genotype in humans? Um, let's see if I can... Whoa. Um, so, autosomal abnormalities. There's... Uh, Turner cyst syndrome occurs when females inherit only one X chromosome, so their geno genotype is XO. Mm. Um, triple X syndrome, they get three X chromosomes. Mm. These are super females. Kleinfelter syndrome, uh, males inherit one or more extra X chrom chromosome, XXY or XXXY. Um, and XYY syndrome, males inherit an extra Y chromosome, and their genotype is XYY. I don't know where that comes from, where the extra Y comes from, though, how that works. Well, so to the chat room, we're aware that you need an X to make an egg in, in normal production yes. of eggs. We understand that. The question is whether, since you're injecting these these cells that could turn into gametes into the ovaries of these mice, that you have these preset chromosome types that you're that you're injecting in there. It's not being produced naturally by the body to make an, an egg, which would always be an X chromosome. If you're injecting these chromosome packets in there to make an egg, you could be injecting a Y. And so you could end up with a Y in an egg in the mouse. The question is whether that could actually go on to be a viable egg or not, which I would postulate that it would not. I would think you can't have a Y egg. As to why, I don't, I don't have scientific reason behind that. That just seems to me like if... This may be as something else we should research for next week. I'm going to write this down, too. <laughs> <laughs> There's some interesting stuff to look into, yeah. Why? Um, yeah, I don't know that it could be possible. I think that in the XYY syndrome, what you have is an egg, one egg that gets um, two sperm right. in right. it. Yes. That's how you end up with two Ys. Um, but, yeah, how you would get a YY. I don't, I or I think it's something in... I always get meiosis and mitosis mixed up. Meiosis is when you end up with the haploid, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So in meiosis, you have some sort of separation of the chromosomes that's faulty, and you end up with an extra chromosome over on one side, I think, also. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. But it, it is a really interesting question as to the, the germline differentiation and development of these cells, you know, when they when they uh, type themselves, when they imprint themselves to being either an X or a Y, mm -hmm. you, know, what, you know, what happens at that point to determine that this is going to look like an egg and the mm -hmm. Y is going to look like a sperm? You know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. is there something during the imprinting that at that point certain genes get turned on and there is no turning back and this is ex that there are just certain things that are going to happen? Right. right. So, right. yeah. It's interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so basically, this just opens a whole other scientific can of worms, the ability to make sex cells. <laughs> sex does yes. sell. Sex does sell. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there is a... One of the researchers says if all goes well in their research, they could repeat the mouse work in monkeys within five to ten years with small tweaks. And this method could then be used to produce human germ cells shortly but why? after. So we if 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 it ha because of like the 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 lab setup that they have and where they're they're already starting to tweak human cells and primate cells, um, we could be looking at within 
15 years being able to take a skin cell from any one of us and use that to create a sex cell, a germline cell that could then be used to, um, you know, fertilize an egg. Oh, so it's, you know, it, a possible way of solving infertility. Help with solving it, yeah, to solve infertility, yeah. Uh, especially for single individuals who don't want a spouse. You just want yeah. little Justins running around. No, 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 no. It's, I, 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 love I didn't the, say that I love it would the method in which my pay. children came to be enough not to need to turn to science or desire to in, in, this, in this matter. But I could see being the, you know, completely self-contained person who's just a billionaire and has people around but nobody that you want to procreate with and choosing this. As an option, why not? Why not? Why not? And Rebar makes a very good point. How about we replicate this a few times before we just jump ahead to monkeys? That does seem a little bit drastic, yeah. a little yeah. rushed. Yeah. yeah, a little rushed. Definitely a good point. Slightly. Let's let's try it again, people. It hasn't been replicated outside of their lab yet, people. That's what we yeah. But maybe it's because they have a magic lab. They might. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, science is all about magic labs to make yeah. things happen. That's right. Uh, real quick, my last story, University of Cambridge. Uh, they figured out a pretty unique formula for growing food in gardens places. Uh, they could be grown and maintained in many places where it isn't previously been viable, such as deserts, landfills, former mining sites, thanks to an inexpensive non-chemical soil additive. The additive, a simple mixture of organic wastes, such as chicken manure, zeolite, a porous volcanic rock, could be used to support agriculture, both in the developed and developing worlds, while avoiding the serious environmental consequences associated with the overuse of chemical fertilizers. The mixture permits controlled release of the nutrients, I'm assuming because of how porous the volcanic rock is, it regulates water well, and an ideal it becomes an ideal environment for growing crops. They've demonstrated that with the addition of the bio uh, fertilizer, biofuel crops can be successfully grown and, more importantly, sustained, even on coal waste highly contaminated with metal residues. So this is, I mean, the idea here is you would be growing corn on land that wasn't viable for making food, but you could make a bio uh, bio crop for biodiesel. Uh, using coal waste from the site is a, of a former uh, colliery Nottinghamshire is a substrate. The researchers grew rapeseed, flax, sugar beet, and maize with different additives, manure, zeolite, lime, bio, biofertilizers, well as coal waste alone and regular garden soil. Plants grown in the coal waste with added biofertilizer uh, achieve nearly twice the weight and yield of those in garden soil or even with the coal waste where they added manure. Interesting. More than twice the weight and yield of those grown in cold waste with the added zeolite. The results are published in the August issue, International Journal of Environment and Resource. So, thinking up some pretty clever ways of making gardens grow in places where they wouldn't have done so or thought so before. Hmm. Love it. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I have one more quick one. Mm -hmm. Researchers find mother beetles eat young that beg too much. <laughs> okay. University of Edinburgh found that a certain type of beetle mother engages in offspring cannibalism when pestered too much. It's published in Behavioral Ecology. Uh, they... Researchers controlled the way food was doled out from the mother to offspring by offering food from some mothers that were dead and from some mothers that were alive. Wow. At issue was which of the offspring would gain better access to the food source under the different scenarios. And watching the beetles at work, the researchers noted that the older offspring gained better access to mouth uh, parts of the parent regardless of whether she was dead or alive. So essentially this makes sense because the older they are, the longer they've survived, the larger they are, 
the better chance they have of survival, you want to give them more of your resources as a mother. So that all makes sense. But then in the second experiment, they deposited an adult female and a very large number of offspring from other beetles onto a carcass to see how the mother would respond to the inevitable begging that would ensue, much more than she was used to before. They found that the mother responded by killing and eating those offspring that begged the most. Yeah, so basically well, they're well, going to allocate their resources to the beetles that need less because they're going to do better as well in the future. Yeah, one way Makes to sense. create a more polite society. Sure, or also the way to have the most successful babies with the least energy. Yeah. That's a good, that, that, that's a smart mom right there. Mm -hmm. Successful babies. That's least right. Energy. Squeaky wheel gets eaten. That's correct. Uh, Take note, children. <laughs> Don't squeak. Kidding, kidding. Don't We're not squeak. beetles. It's different. <laughs> it's different with humans. That's correct. Not very different. But well, it's different with mammals in general because mammals have already put so much energy into raising a baby long enough for it to even be born that they're not just going to throw away those resources. Yeah. Whereas beetles don't care. They lay thousands of eggs. No problem. What's another baby? No gobble, gobble. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> Bob, baby, bobble, gobble, gobble. Next week, we'll be back here again doing the science chitter-chatting. It's fun stuff, sciencey goodness. Uh, we will be using on-air Hangouts, so you can probably watch us through Hangouts on air on Google+, Plus if that's what you do. You can also find us on YouTube Live, or you can find us at our YouTube page, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash thisweekinscience, if you want to watch us live. That's every Thursday around 7.30, 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Yes. Jeff. Oh, and uh, there's also a chat room, which we're going to post somewhere. We're going to post that to the website or somewhere very soon where, where people are chatting away during the live Google Plus show. Uh, a good place to join in about a half an hour early, uh, which is around 7 or 7.30, because um, that's where you get to meet all your other uh, friendly science enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Be a part of the family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, thank you for listening to the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Twist is available as a podcast. Just Google This Week in Science in your iTunes directory. Or if you have an Android device, you can Google Twist for Droid in the Android marketplace. And uh, we're also on the iPhone, simply as Twist, T-W-I-S. That's right. For more information on anything you've heard here today, show notes will be available on our website, www.twist.org. We also want to hear from you, so email us at kirsten at thisweekinscience.com, justin at thisweekinscience.com, or Blair Baz at twist.org. Yes, yes. Be sure to put twist, T-W-I-S, somewhere in that subject line, or you will be investigated by the NSA. Hmm. <laughs> Ouch. Yes. You can also contact us on the Twitter at Dr. Kiki, at Jackson Fly, at Blair's Menagerie. We love your feedback. If there's a topic you would like us to cover, address a suggestion for an interview, a haiku that came to you in the night, please let us know. And we'll be back here next week. We hope you'll join us again for some more great science news. And if you've learned anything from today's show, remember. It's all in your head. This week in science. This week in science. This week in science is the end of the world. So I'm setting up a shop. Got my banner unfurled. It says the scientist is in. I'm gonna sell my advice. Show them how to stop the robot with a simple device. I'll reverse global warming with a wave of my hand. And all it'll cost you is a couple of grand. This week science is coming your way. So everybody listen to what I say. I use the scientific method for all that it's worth. And I'll broadcast my opinion all over the earth. Cause it's this.
This week in science. This week in science. 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 This week in science. This week in science. This week in science. 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 I've got one disclaimer, and it shouldn't be new. That what I say may not represent your views, but I've done the calculations and I've got a plan. If you listen to the science, you may just yet understand that we're not trying to threaten your philosophy. We're just trying to save the world from jeopardy. Jeopardy. This week in science is coming your way. So everybody listen to everything we say. And if you use our methods instead of rolling a die, we may rid the world of toxoplasma. Got the eye. Ay, 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 ay. Because it's this week in science. This week in science. This week in science. 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 This week in science, this week in science, this week in science, 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 I'm trying to promote more rational thought And I'll try to answer any question you got So how can I ever see the changes I seek When I can only set up shop one hour a week? This week in science is coming your way You better just listen to what we say And if you've learned anything from the words that we've said Then please just remember it's all in your head this week in science. This week in science. This week in science. 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 This week in science. This week in science. 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 This week in 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 science. Look, it's the Californian two-spot octopus. Oh, cute little! I see that cute little octopus again. I love cephalopods. Cephalopods are awesome. They're so cool. Head foots. Yeah, they're, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, stomach foots are pretty awesome too. Cephalopods, though, are they're like. Their brain, they have a distributed brain network. You know, they've got the the brain in each arm kind of a thing. They're Because they're invertebrates, they don't have the brain plus the spinal cord kind of a situation going on. It's all this ganglia, but it's yes. complicated, and they're capable of very complex behavior. And mm -hmm. I really wouldn't be surprised that if some of the more advanced octopuses are, are capable of emotions. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. And Way. they, so a lot of people get confused about like their brain too because they do have lots of nerve balls and they have ganglia yeah. like you were saying, but they have something that a lot of scientists do call a brain that's shaped okay. like a donut that's like around donut. their gastrointestinal tract. Right. And my favorite fact about them is that if they swallow something too big, they get brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> now, honey, don't shove so much food in your mouth opening. <laughs> You're gonna hurt your brain. Yeah, because all the food goes through the hole in their brain. Oh, <laughs> that sounds like that's poor engineering. Yeah. Works well enough. It works well mm. enough. I probably... So much for intelligent design. Da da da. Or, or, or it is a very clever coping mechanism. It's like to keep them from overeating. Down, wolf, no, no, no. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, I need to, oh, make me forget. Oh, doubled in and out, double, double. Make me forget. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All memories going away. Oh, oh. 
They're so smart, though. I'm pretty sure they do have a lot more complex thought processes than we realize. I mean, they're willing. They they're able to solve problems better than small children. That's pretty good. When we teach them certain things, they recognize different colors, different signs. They can recognize certain symbols. And one of my favorite stories about an octopus is he was able to shoot water out of his siphon to short out the electrical circuit on the wall in order what? to get out of his enclosure that was sealed with an electronic. No Yeah. way. Yeah. Oh my goodness! They will rule the world one day. They're right. super smart. Is, it's amazing. Yeah. As long as that story didn't come from New Zealand, that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> goodness. I got called. I so got called you, you, you think that I have an ex-boyfriend that played too much video games? I think you have a girl, an ex-girlfriend from New Zealand that hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah. I, I actually I, I don't I don't have I don't have any any ex girlfriends. Oh uh, yeah. Uh huh. I the 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 um. <laughs> sad fact is, uh, I guess I should admit this uh, now. I've I've never been with a woman. So your children are copies of yourself. They are close. Discussed earlier. They're they're part of a secret laboratory that I did. I made a little extra college money uh, by volunteering for an experiment, and this is the result. Yes, it's for true. shame. So your children are property of the lab. No, 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 <laughs> no. They're not property. That's that was like the parting gift. I got to keep them. Right. But at any point, they could call it in, and the investors could want to show off your kids at, a, at some sort of summit. There's a probably really stupid Vince Vaughn movie that's out or coming out or something, where it turns out this this uh, lab where he used to donate uh, semen for you know his beer money or whatever uh -huh. only used him. <laughs> he was sufficient of a supply oh enough that he Scary. was the father of. 500 children, and then through some accidental record to expose some dumb reason, uh, it gets revealed, and it's this big story. This is this is a real movie coming out. This is a real movie coming out that that the lab only used one individual, the father of 500 children, and then it's about him going around and trying to uh, meet his now because he now he's an older man, meeting his 20 something. Uh -huh. Offspring uh, in the hundreds and trying to help them out anonymously. He's trying not wasn't to make it, contact. Wasn't there a fringe episode about this? I don't know. There was actually. I mean, it was a just real... a little weirder than the story you're telling. Yeah, there's a real <laughs> basis uh, to this story in a sense because there uh, yeah. was a doctor who was running a yeah. fertility clinic that used only himself. Yes. To fertilize women, they would pick out selections from this one's a doctor, this one's a lawyer, this one's blah blah blah, whatever. But it was all him, and it became somewhat obvious at some point as the children began to grow how strikingly they resembled the good doctor. <laughs> I'm looking at this thing that Iron Lord did. Which thing? What gender do you identify with? Do you play video games for two or more yeah, hours a so week? So far, 20% yeah. of our listeners identify their gender as other. Yeah, that's interesting. That or they didn't make mark one, and that's why... No, you have oh. to mark one. I just did it. Is there an, is there an other to mark? Mm -hmm. Oh, there is. Okay. I didn't yeah. Care. So I'm one of two females. Mm -hmm. I wonder who those are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, one hundred percent of our live listening audience <laughs> right is now not female. Is not Kiki. Female. It says you play seven hours of video games a week. Oh yeah. Oh. What? No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. Oh my god, I hate Google Plus so much right now. I might, I might currently be in that seven hour a week category. No. Yeah, because they left the the chess titans like Windows play against the computer chess game 
on the computers at work, and, and I've been playing a lot of chess in my downtime. Hmm. I've reignited my chess addiction. Why don't you just play real chess? Against people? Mm-hmm. Because they suck. <laughs> no, I mean, at chess. You don't like winning? No, I do, but it's not... It's uh, it's like it's like putting a, a puppy in a plastic bag and then submersing it in water and putting rocks on top of it. Like, even if it gets out of the bag, it's going to be dead, and it's going to be this horrible scene. I'll feel really bad for doing it. That's what playing chess against mortals is for me. Or, or I just need to find somebody who's good at chess. Actually, actually, one of the people uh, at work purports to have made uh, become a, gotten to the rank of master, maybe even, uh, I think got to the rank of master in some competitive chess playing until he went to a, a Las Vegas venue where they had a bunch of the chess masters from around. The way it works, I guess, is the more people in your region that you're beating, you get a point system and you go up and up. But then when he played against out-of-the-region players, he got you can lose rank by playing them. He got knocked all the way back down into the... But still, it'd be interesting. I'm gonna, there's one person uh, out there who I'm going to try to, to play. Sounds like a really good investment of your time. Well, this, I mean, there's a lot of downtime, and I'm increasing my brain's plasticity right. and elasticity now. Uh, I have so I'm going to bring chess that. Is, is, I would say if it was, had to fall in the sim category or the StarCraft category, it's probably the sim category. So I don't know if it's actually doing that much for your brain. Well, well, if you play fast enough, it is strategy, and it's looking ahead and... Well, so are the stuff. Sims, but they're not as... The Sims isn't, though, because the Sims is the Sims is much more narcissistic. The Sims is like, oh, I want to get the stainless steel refrigerator for my Sim. It's a lot of, like... Uh, what, what's the what's the word? Um, it's, it's a lot more concerned with the aesthetics of the environment that you're creating and less so about the strategy. Are they talking about the game The Sims or are they talking about like Sim City and stuff like that? No, they're not. I think The Sims is the one where you have the little people in the houses right. so and you have to make them go to the toilet Were they talking about specifically The Sims? It said The Sims. It didn't say Sim City. Okay. Which even that like one is sort of some of The Sim City ones are game. kind of like... Those are a little more based on real consequences from your actions. Just because that's the game you've played. No, no, I'm just saying because, <laughs> like, if you don't put enough plumbing in your city... Mm -hmm. It will then, stink. Yeah, then there's problems. And if you don't have drainage, then when it rains, your city floods. And it's stuff that's a lot more almost StarCraft like because you have to build... You have to make sure you have all the right resources and you have to do all this stuff that... <laughs> Ar 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 Arlen, no, I'm sorry. It's Arlen or in the chat room, who's I think a little put off by my metaphor about the drowning puppy in a plastic bag. That was pretty horrible. That was, I'm sorry. I apologize for the metaphor. <laughs> it was a little extra crude. It didn't have to be that bad. I don't know, Justin. Usually I think you go with the crude when you have a choice. I, sometimes it's just what's available to my brain. It just goes to bad places. And I don't filter. Okay. You but hear the worst of what I, I, I think, but sometimes it's probably worth putting through the filter first. Gord, why do you think I've never played The Sims? I played The Sims when I was in college before the internet was big. <laughs> Before the internet, the year that Facebook was created, I was in college. You know, I, that that is something that's really an interesting thing to bring up. I think I played more video games when before the internet was a was a big deal. Before social yeah. media. Yeah, exactly. Now they're your time waster as you're looking at pictures that people posted on the internet. Oh my god! I think I just got an app in here. Awesome. I'm oh, this is exciting. Oh my what? god. What? I got <laughs> Hangout Toolbox. I got Hangout Toolbox. I'm so I excited. know I have that now too. Can I ooh, This I is the first time that I've been able to add it. I finally got something to work. <gasps> oh, lower third. Hello. Right. Hello, lower uh, third. 
things are gonna work here. Okay, now I'm gonna go. I have to find another app. Oh, I'm so excited about this, you guys. This is. I'm sorry to. Ooh. So wait, uh, Blair, where do you work again? Yeah. Where's the place? Aquarium of the Bay. Aquarium of the Bay. Correct. Is that a cool place to go check out? Yes. Very much so. Are you there tomorrow? Yes. I am indeed. What time? I'll be there from when the aquarium opens all the way, and which I'll be there at 8, but the aquarium opens at 9, and I'll be there until 4.30. Oh, can you get me in? Uh, I probably can't get you in for free yet. Oh. I haven't I been there long enough. I wonder if can get me in for free. Maybe. I'm with this radio show, but it's not really. You probably radio. could. Mm -hmm. Where's the media tickets thing? I'll figure that out later. Um, oh, oh, you've got an octopus. Look at that. Yeah. How's my lower third, guys? Oh, that's looking nice. Look at you. I have hippos. Some purpleness. Custom overlay. I know. Oh, but I don't want it there. That's ugly. I want it on the other side. Yeah, I think is it can... is it big like the Monterey Aquarium? Uh, it's smaller than that. Okay. Is it is is it fun to go to? Yes, it is. It's oh. great. It, Where's the? Big, I don't see any pictures. Walk through. There's a walk through. Yes, the un the underwater tunnels. Ooh. Do I get Your fish will uh, swim all around you and over your heads. Would I get a behind the scenes tour? Um, you might have to wait on that one. Okay. Um, we're trying to go take a trip. I wanted to go take them to uh the what is it? The solar solar living village place, but I forgot how far away it was. I thought it was in lower Clear Lake and, or lower uh, Lake County and it's all the way in Mendocino. It's like an hour further or a couple hour round trip further drive than I wanted to do. So I'm looking for something else to do. This might be. Mm. Who right, can right now, be where, is now? where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I want to go. Where's the? Tell me how to get there. Not plan a visit. Hours and location. That's. Oh, it's uh. Oh no, it's on Pier 39? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yep, no. you gotta deal with the zoo. And by zoo, I mean tourists. Yeah, no, just get finding a place to park and then not losing my children through the yes. swarming crowds. Yes. That's why tomorrow, well, tomorrow's Friday, you're probably still okay. Yeah. If you went on Saturday or Sunday, it'd be absolutely insane. Okay. Uh, Arn Lord, those schooling fish were anchovies. Sweet. My picture. Look at that. Was anchovies. Look at that. Look at your lower third. Woo hoot. Mine is. Twist. I need to. I need to make myself some sort of logo. The Blair logo. The yeah. Blair go. <laughs> so now what I have to do is see Oh, uh, I know what I'll do I have an idea oh, yeah. uh -huh. Choose file Is it in pictures? Yes This one <laughs> Add a logo? How did you guys You guys are way ahead yeah. of me on this one Look at my logo guys it's pretty sweet. <sighs> Remember that picture? I love that picture. Oh, I love that one. I think we should put it on the Zazzle Tony. site, that picture. Happy Because we could, we could put that on Zazzly things, right? Oh, totally. Yeah, anything. That might any be a good one to put there. Is, yeah. Any image that we have in, in decent... Uh, Resolution. We can Although it. maybe we should have it say something besides Happy Trails if we're gonna put it on Zazzle, but we could do the exact same image and just have Tony put This Week in Science on the top, and it'd still be awesome. Exactly. Hmm. Maybe we should do that. Maybe. 
What are your thoughts? I don't have any. That and we still have it. We still haven't done our um, Quantum Club. What's that? Quantum Club T-shirts. Was like was Quantum Quantum Club was not before your time, was it? I don't know. Maybe. What's Quantum Club? <laughs> Quantum Club. So when we were at Twit, um, there's another show called NSFW with Brian Brushwood and uh-huh. Justin Robert Young, and they right. have the Diamond Club. What do they do there? Uh huh. Uh huh. Diamond Club, and so their listeners got all into the Diamond Club, and it's just a made-up club, just for people who listen to the show. <laughs> and so I was like, whatever, we can have a Quantum Club, and you know, there was some study, some story that. I think connected um, the whole uh, uh, what's it called where butterfly flaps its wings starts a hurricane oh, in butterfly Africa effect. the butterfly effect was linked to quantum effects there's that loud thing again interesting the aliens are coming again uh, that it's linked to quant- it's linked to quantum effects and so I was like haha we could have a butterfly quantum club and then Tony nice. came up with a really cool design. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah. So maybe we should have Tony draw an awesome picture of the three of us for until we can actually all get in the same room. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just have a have a nice drawn picture. Yeah. There's lots of podcasts that have their their like picture representing them as like a fun illustration or something. Yeah, that is awesome. So Tony could probably do a really really good one if he has time. I know he's been working on stuff. Um, Patrick maybe also is a very good artist. Yes. That's yes. right, minions. <laughs> Go. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to get this uh, Pro Studio app to work. I don't know how to make it work. I guess I have to. I'm gonna try. I'm trying to figure. Pro Studio, so what do I have to do to make it work? You know, th- apps are so hard to make work sometimes. Technology. <laughs> Google Plus, sometimes you are not, you are not easy. Just want easy. So, oh, I have a question. I was looking at calendar stuff mm-hmm. today, and so we have... Um, Halloween, ten thirty one is on a Thursday. Nice. Mm. Will we have a Twistoween show, or nope. will we? I got. I'm gonna be out bagging candy. You're gonna be bagging candy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we can either just skip that week, or we can record on another date. I think we should do a make it up. Uh, I mean, a pr- yeah. make it up meaning a uh, makeup. makeup show. <laughs> okay. okay. Um. Goodness. Well, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I have pub quizzes now. Yeah. Um, Friday or Saturday, I'll be having a party at my house. <laughs> nice. Maybe that's where we should do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it might it might be difficult that week. So maybe we'll. Well, maybe let's let's just see as it gets closer. As it gets closer. I'm gonna think about okay. it. Maybe um, the aquarium wants to host us on, during the day on Halloween. Because there will be people dressed like fishes all over. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> Pretty awesome. Interesting. That would be really fun. Um, also, Thanksgiving is a Thursday. Sometimes we do a makeup show. Sometimes yeah. we just skip it. We could just, yeah. So that's another one to decide. No, we always skip Thanksgiving. We, we always skip. skip okay, it. so let's. Yeah, we'll I think sk- so. We will skip Thanksgiving and then 
Uh, Twistmas. Twist. Thursday is Christmas Day. Cause, wait, the 25th is Christmas Day? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, 25th is Christmas Day. 26th uh -huh. is the day after Christmas Day. Boxing Day. Bo uh, yeah, Boxing Day. <laughs> Where you throw away all the empty boxes. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I don't know if people are going to be whatever, but anyway, putting it out there. 1226, it's the day after Christmas immediately. So um, that also is the last last show of the year so well, we got to do that it one. would be no the choice. it would be the one that's our top 11 yeah no choice and, and that's year on show. new year's eve you're saying no 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 oh. no no new um and then the new year's show the predictions for the new year that is usually uh, the first week of the new year which mm -hmm. would be on the 2nd of january so perfect mm -hmm. yeah yeah, so that would be that's perfect. And that's the one where you and go over could, your predictions and whether they were correct or not. That's right. the yeah, and then the make year, right? and then make new and then make new predictions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the the end of the year show is the the top eleven science stories of the year, and that would be twelve twenty six. That one we don't necessarily since we're not doing news, we don't necessarily have to do it on the twenty sixth. So if we want to mm. pre record it like a mm -hmm. week earlier or something like that, mm -hmm. we could do that. But the twenty sixth is like pretty unless anybody's going out of town, I guess. Right? I don't think I am. I'm gonna I, have to I work go... probably, so Yeah, so we'll figure it out. Yeah, because okay. that's like seems like that'd be a fine one to, to show up for. Okay. Just because if you, I mean, I mean, I'm just thinking like Christmas Eve and Christmas. I mean, even Christmas Day. If their show was on yeah. Christmas Day, I'd be like, fine, like it's over. <laughs> it's right? over. Christmas is over. Christmas is over. Yeah. Mhm. Mm I'd do 26th, and then the 26th. Then we wouldn't have another one until the second. The, the, the second. second, which is the next week, the next Thursday. That's Thursday. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then the show January. after that, I suggest we should probably try to do it on the 9th of January. You think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We can and why? Because it's, it's a Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was kidding. Yeah. You guys, oh. come on. Um, and there's also the question of whether or not we want to try doing a repeat of uh, Twistmageddon just because. <laughs> ah. <laughs> just if we want to actually try yeah. and do a fundraiser of some kind or something. Yeah. Like that. But anyway, it's time to start thinking about things like that. Okay. So. Well, my weekends are Monday, Tuesday, so I could go all yeah. day Monday, no problem. <laughs> I have every third Monday off. Ah, things are aligning, I mm -hmm. see. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah. things to think about. Okay. And, and so um, next week you said something's happening with you? Next week I am going to Burning Man. Right. I got a ticket. So, Justin, you good to do the show by yourself? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'm a, I do show. No, I'll be there. Yeah, sure. As per usual. Per usual? Yeah. It's hipster talk. It means usual, I think. Oh, thank you. Usually. Or, oh, it's usually. As usually. She's here. She will usually. At, or as per usual. Yeah, that's the other one. Um, Whatever you prefer, bro. <laughs> oh, dear. I was having a conversation with somebody about how they were saying uh, Chinese is a difficult language because words have different meanings based on, on uh, intonations. And I was thinking, you know what? Californians should be really good at learning Chinese then because...
Oh. We were, oh, we were off air. We might have been oh, off air we for a minute. We were off air. We were I off air them. for Now we're back. I broke things. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I broke That's okay. things. That's all right. So, Arnlor, maybe... Um, I haven't been to the website in a while. Um, we... The web chat stuff we could use on the website, right? Some sort of link to get to the chat room for our shows. Wait, what are you trying? What, what happened? Arnlor's asking what we need for uh, to add to the website or anything going on with the website. Oh yeah, it, did anything happen in getting people together to get the live page? That's what I would mm. love to see happen. As I know, two weeks ago, not last week, but two weeks ago, um, someone had made up a um, a mock live page that looked really good. Like it looked like that. That had work. the chat and the video on it, right? The chat and the video, yeah. And all we'd have to do is basically, in the web page before every episode started, just go change the embed code for the video. And I, oh, and it might actually find it on its own. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I don't know. And then somebody else was saying... I'd love to see who, that happen. Someone was talking to me last week about how they could talk us through getting a repeating link that is the same, that is easy to if type you in. Check the chat room of our hangout. That will be see there the is a same link, link for the, the, the show room. every week. Yeah. So it's if in our chat in the in the hangout chat, there I put up the link for the walk you through how to do it type thing. In our hangout chat. Oh okay. Yeah. Cause I'm like oh. oh I did read this once before. But I, but I had this is for, there is something about this that does not I looked into it and there's something about it that does not work for uh, what we're doing because uh, it's okay. yeah it's a repeating event but it's Creative also a hangout event. and there's so there's give the event a date part of the future, the future. Yeah, I, yeah, I tried so this. it's because we have multiple parties that it doesn't work is that the deal it's not exactly the same. Oh, because yeah. it's a Google Hangout and it's not a YouTube thing. Yeah. We need to know how to do... Okay, so this is why Google exists, right? And it's... Uh, all, I, hmm, I mean, I might be able to make a repeating event invitation so that people can be invited to the event, to the... Uh, the event of come watch this show but in terms of the hangout link and what we're doing um, the hangout is different every time and there's nothing about Google right. is still working on that there's right. nothing about getting the same hangout link because we don't it's, it's not a repeating hangout where we let anybody come be a part of it. Yeah, there, there are some issues with it. Hmm. Ah, Siphon it has to it isn't quite right. Or if it doesn't exist now, it, it I'm sure it will soon. I hope so. It must. I mean, it, it, yeah, I mean, it'd be the kind of thing, the the issue with what Google's doing, though, is that right now the way their system's set up is that if you're doing a Hangout on air, it's a unique recording event mm. that is going to become a unique file in their servers that people can access and view, right? So if you have the same link for that every single time, I would imagine that it would just rewrite the file. Hmm. And it's a video file. So I don't know if they can do this. I don't know if that's a, a can do kind of thing. Hmm. So for like a live event, sure, fine. Come to this. This is the link. This is where it happens every single time. But because that live event gets recorded and turned into a file, I think that's where they run into a problem. But Arnor not, says, I, I can create person, a so. permanent page to update along with the embedded page. 
Yeah, so like what we would, like what Siphon put together, like I'd love to have just twist.org slash live or live.twist.org. That'd be fantastic. And that's what we tell people to go to. And then all we have to do is get the, you know, get the link or get the embed embed code from the YouTube page when I start the broadcast. Uh And then then I'll go to the website. All I have to do is go to the website and paste it in. And then that would do it. Unless, of course, you know, there's an automatic way that someone can set that up. See, um, this is interesting. Yeah, so Siphon's put together Twist Live and Chat. Right, I see that. Pretty good. Pretty mm-hmm. awesome. Sweet. Yeah. Like, I can't even remember what it used to look like on Twit anymore. I know, right? <laughs> I can't even really remember. Twit what? Twitter, huh? Like, you used to have to pop out the chat, I remember. And that yeah. would be a separate page, just like it is now. Yeah. But it was connected to the same website, so it was like an all-in-one thing. Yeah, but I, I love the idea, you know, people could still go to the, the chat on their own, you know, mm-hmm. if that's what they want to do, or they can view it out at YouTube or Google+, Plus, whatever, but this just makes it a nice, simple place to start. Yeah. That I think would be awesome. That's yeah, that would be lovely to just be able to put into like Twitter or whatever, go to twist.org slash live. Uh-huh. And that's it. I like that's that. It. And not like a crazy complicated YouTube A yeah. and then when we get mark, whatever. We get kicked off three times and there's four links that we've had to post for one show. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. It would make it much better. And if it auto-updates, then people don't have to keep pressing refresh and then miss the disclaimer because they forgot to hit refresh. Yeah, so, uh, Siphon, I know you've just thrown stuff onto, you know, a page from our website. It looks, I like it, what you've thrown on there. It looks looks great. pretty good. Um, You know, the only thing which Arnlore can do is just make it work within the back end of our... WordPress template, you know, because we don't necessarily need, like, you know, the rest of the front page down there. But mm-hmm. Arn, Laura, that'd be awesome. And Siphon, it looks awesome. You guys are great. Wait, wait. The Hangout Jay's thing I have embedded is automatic with the pulling the live link. But Whoa. So it auto updates. Yeah? I think Whoa. so. Just thing in the end user's photos by asking YouTube what the latest feed is. Wow. Siphon, you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. Jeez. Um. Yeah, do you want to hear something so interesting is, do that I learned awesome. today about animals? Awesome. <laughs> yes. This is very random. Okay. So I was reading about gastropods, as one does. Snails, right. yes. With and so like snails, they go through this thing called torsion where their whole body rotates 180, right? And so basically uh-huh. their waist area and also their reproductive area is essentially on top of their head, which is weird, right? Yeah. But so this is heads. torsion when they're, yeah, when they're, their body in... In the shell. Larval right. development, yeah. Oh, lar- okay, yeah. Twists, and that's why the shell is twisted too, and all of this. So, some animals like sea slugs evolved back out of the shell and back out of the torsion. And so, when you look at larval development, they start to tort, they start developing the shell, and then the shell becomes reabsorbed and they go through detorsion. They were detorquified. Yeah. Uh-huh. Weird. So they get torted and then they get detorted. Yeah. It's like, take Why? that, Why evolution that? deniers. Bam. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about that. Yeah. And then um, also, some sea slugs eat cnidarians and all of the unfired. Um, nidae, the nidesis, the nematocyst, the, the little firing, stinging cells, right? All of the ones that haven't fired before, they can process through their body and then use. 
That's crazy. They're like, I just ate this anemone. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> I will incorporate you into myself. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh. amazing, amazing. A minion of twists. It is not backed up by Squarespace. It is a WordPress uh, template that is hosted on our hosting company. Huh. Hosted on known host. That's where we're hosted currently. Mm. Sweet. Hmm. Yep. That's <laughs> all I got. <laughs> nice. Um, is there anything else that we need done with the website? I think the live page is the big awesome thing right now. Mm -hmm. Because that would that would just be so cool. And then the It'll other make it much thing. More user friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Super user friendly for the live stuff. And then, and just when people come to the website, they can see it and it'll play whatever the most recent show is, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it won't just be blank, which is neat. Mm -hmm. um, what else needs to happen? I think I'm tired. I'm tired. I have to wake <laughs> up very early tomorrow, actually, but like 5.30. <sighs> yeah. I'm extra sleepy. Extra sleepy? Why? Oh, uh, been hanging out with Roy a lot lately. <laughs> he doesn't get sleepy? He does, too. He gets sleepy, too. But it was a couple of late nights, early mornings this week. I'm really ready for some sleeping. And I got adventure day yeah. tomorrow. Which, Adventure Day. You're coming to San Francisco. Maybe. Cool. I'm, I'm either uh, going to go visit Blair's Aquarium. Which would be very neat. It's a great aquarium. Which would be awesome. That's that's now what I'm shooting for. But I have to negotiate with the kids because they, it's been I've been told they do not want to be in the car very long. Mm. Well, they so, get to touch yeah. sharks and rays if they come to the aquarium. Mm. See, that's so. I will, it's either that or awesome. the backup plus sea plan, cucumbers. My favorite. Backup plan is a science discovery uh, place in Sacramento. We might mm -hmm. go. Oh yeah, there. you have to go there and tell me how that is. Oh no, we've been there before. It's been okay. a year or two, but um, yeah, that place is pretty cool. They have a. Uh, they have a. Ground control simulator, <laughs> so you can you can go in there and and uh, press buttons and stuff and launch a uh, a space shuttle. They've That's this, cool. Yeah, they've got some pretty neat stuff there. Um, they've actually got a I don't know if it's an actual. It might be a. I think they've got like one of the space capsules, but it might be a recreation. I can't. I don't remember if it's an actual real one. Or when it was built as a replica, hmm. but it's the right size mm. at least. And, you know. uh, but anyway, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. Maybe check that out. But that's in an opposite direction. So I have to negotiate with the children in the morning. We've been the first place I wanted to go to is again a couple hours further away uh, than I thought it was. Well, I seem to remember Hopland being much closer than it actually is. That's too bad. Yeah. So that one kind of too they, far for the kids. Too far. Whatever to happened to our off the grid thing that we were gonna do? Science Island. Oh no no no. So that, that farm. Yeah. So that also isn't where I thought it was. I thought it was gonna be like in the Russian River, but it's like this. No, it's, it's far. Way further north. Um, yeah, I'm it's still like down. near Oregon. Yeah, I'm still down. I'm still totally down for doing that. I just don't know when. Would be a yeah. good time to go now. Yeah. That's it. That's the. Oh, it's always time. I wouldn't want to go when it's raining a lot. I don't really. Which want is to probably be what's going to be happening. Well, yeah. if we went, let's go tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's what we'll do. That's okay. okay. Never mind. I'll just trick the kids. Five hours of driving later, they'll be like, "You lied to us." I'm like, "Yeah." Well, first you have to drive drive over and get me, and then we'll all go. Wait, yeah. I thought you were driving. 
That's right. what you said. You yeah. said you was like, I'll come pick you up. I'll drive. No, that's not what I said. All right. Um, that would be pretty cool. And I, uh, Kiki, where did Kiki go? She's there. Is she I'm doing stretching yoga? my what hip. Are you doing? No, yeah, I've got I've got hip pain, so I'm oh, like no. stretching my hip. Yeah. Oh. So we were talking Ooh. about. Um, I think I think Kiki was gone for the conversation. Um, Last we were talking, week. No, no, this was a month ago or two months ago or something. This was a long, no, this was a long time ago. This was like We're, probably six months ago. <laughs> I can't remember what the thing is. Is it, it's like bear. There was bear black in the bear, name. Black bear. Black bear. Bear was in the name. Like black bear. I bet it, phone. I bet I can is, find it. Is this it one in, of the places, to me. Justin, you, f you found, it's like an off the grid farm thing that you wanted to yeah. go check out so that you could 60s, do research. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because um, because because Blair was talking about what she had seen the off the grid right. farm you went to when you were in Jerusalem. Yeah, so Black yeah. Bear so is like one that, of those yeah. type of deals in California where they've been doing, they've been doing it for fifty years now. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and so, so I was thinking we could go up there and like hang out for a couple of days and see. If it has Black to, Bear Ranch. Wow. That's it. May fourth, we were talking about it. Oh my goodness, that's a while ago. Black Bear Ranch. We could do a three day recon. Wait, did you wait? How did you find it? Uh, I went into my text message. And did you did you or did you not say you would drive? Um, <laughs> I said. Uh, uh huh. You <laughs> said Kiki would do fine because of her experience at Burning Man. Exactly. I said she. And that's why it oh, would be a better choice because we'd be more fish out of water. Yeah. Um, he said you said lack of bathing and no liquor stores. Yeah, that would be. I did say I would try. Downfall. You and I's downfall would be there would be no quick place to get liquor and we wouldn't be bathing and that's what's gonna make it tough I for us. I totally said I would drive. Well, yes. Yeah. Thank Look you. at this mind like a steel trap. <laughs> I said, <laughs> what were you I'll say the word, I'm coming to pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, let's go in August. And you said, right on, I'll set it up. So we're leaving tomorrow, right? It's, yeah, it's the end of August. Yeah, we're going to, to work. <laughs> Man, you guys are funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, three days minimum. So, um, actually, we could do, uh, I mean, I'll have my three days. I do get three days off in a row now. I do get, like, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't. Sunday. Oh. But I think there's other, I think, actually, uh, I would love to be able to do, figure out a way to do some sort of remote reportering. We've talked about this a bazillion times and all that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But, yeah. But, um, like, the place I wanted to go, uh, but the kids objected to because it's too many hours of driving, in Mendo, Hopland, is... I love it. It's, they've got, like, the, they've got a straw bale building there. They've got a lot of solar. They've got um, some pretty cool sustainable gardens and buildings and stuff there. It'd be kind of worth going and doing uh, a day trip. Recon. Yeah. yeah, as a twist venture. <gasps> twist you know ventures! What? You know what they do at That's the aquarium? Ventures. That I'm really excited about. Twist right. in front of anything. Speaking of twist ventures. <laughs> and like it, it works. <laughs> um, they have a hybrid ferry that they do like environmental stuff with kids on. That's really cool. You go around the bay on the ferry. Oh, I've done. I've like, been on the the hybrid ferry. Yeah, I've never done it before. Hmm. I did a I did an interview with them for. Green Tech today, a couple of years ago. Nice. Yeah, yeah it's so cool. that's awesome. Yeah, I think we should do. Yeah, what do you call it? Twist. Twist Ventures. Ventures. Twist Ventures. Oh, I think. Yeah, I'm. I'm down. We can of course, I already went to adventures. Israel, and we kind of missed out on that. <laughs> no, yeah. you had a nice blog post uh, thing of it, and we did. We talked about it on the show, and you brought up pictures. Oh, that was yeah. Cool. Well, I'm gonna go back too, so I can always do a package when I'm there too. Mm -hmm. Next time. I like that idea. There's always adventures, and then we can get we can also and we can get minion adventures too. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when people go places and do sciencey things or learn interesting things, they can have take little... pictures and talk about it. Take this is going back to our little mini segments too, like our little exactly, bonus episodes. exactly. It doesn't have to be like a news story, but like Ulysses, who went to sleep ages ago, is going to be doing a um, a NASA launch thing. Well, wait, but now, what is, he it's said a, he wants to do up. something. It's a tweet up. It's I don't know what it, I don't know what that means. I'm t- I don't it just really means either. a bunch of social media people are going to get together and be uh, ferried around by the NASA PR people and the, they'll get, you know, special um, presentations and tours and they'll That's get to see stuff. Freaking yeah. awesome. Yeah. Nice. It's like it's like a it's like a press meeting but it's specifically for um social media that's people. that's mm. awesome that's totally right yeah. yeah it's really cool yeah it's great i'm excited to hear what happens and what See, what he learns he's 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 uh jumped in uh on a few a few episodes of this week in yeah. science yeah as a guest guest host and now he's working for nasa it happens just like that, people. <laughs> what are we, who is it? Uh, Matajuro. I think Matajuro, if he's still in the room, yeah, is a, is a NASA employee. Is that, is that how it happens? <laughs> just going to ask the people who actually work at NASA. That's how it happens, right? I think some of my guerrilla marketing might have worked. For... Oh. Twist? Uh, when I decided to hash... to at Bill Nye about this show happening. Mm -hmm. A few random people that I've never heard from before ended up following me and tweeting at me. Sweet. So, maybe. I don't know. Going. I tried. Uh, How are we doing on the, uh, how are we doing on the disclaimer coffee table book, Blair? (laughs) (laughs) Why don't we just pass that on to someone else at this point? <laughs> but you were so eager. You were like, I would totally do it. No problem. Yeah, now I have awesome. four jobs. That's a lot of jobs. All right, Kirsten, Kirsten, how yeah. are we doing on the... Disclaimer coffee table book? No, 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 <laughs> no. no. Um, how are we doing on getting a new intern? Oh, yeah, I have to email somebody back. <laughs> what are we going to get the intern to do now? The show show notes. Notes. Disclaimer coffee table book. <laughs> and the disclaimer <laughs> coffee table book. Wait, um, uh, well, th- well, maybe yeah. we can get someone that's more proficient at, at social networking than me. Um, You're pretty good. Uh, I used yeah. to tweet almost every single day from the Twist Twitter, and I don't really do that anymore. No, I what what I'm going to try and set up is a... You, you're just like... Sweet or something. Yeah, I'm a host. I shouldn't have to. That's not what it's about. I just I would rather spend time looking at stories and stuff. No, I know. It's it's a lot more work this uh, this job than uh, I make it look like. Plus, like I'm trying to promote my own Twitter now, and that takes a bunch of time. And it's like, Mm -hmm. um, the other the other uh, was oh, how are we doing about securing a brick and mortar radio program? Uh, I haven't done anything about that yet. Okay. Haven't done anything about that. Not that I would not want to or don't want to. I just mm-hmm. it's something that hasn't happened. I'm excited because I am getting daycare and babysitter things hashed yeah. out better. Mm-hmm. So things I have a feeling that in I hope. I mean, of course, every time I'm like, I've got more time. It's like <laughs> things come in, but. Uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. I think what I think what we need to move anywhere on that front is either one of two things: either one of those people who are really good at talking other people into things. No, not a lawyer. What is it? Uh, an agent? Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Some sort of representation for the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and their first thing they're going to ask us for before they take us on is a reel. Right. No, that's the one exactly yeah. what I was thinking is I'd love to have a reel to send out to a lot of people I can think of right off the bat that I'd want to send a reel off to. Yeah. But 
Um, um, yeah, and one thing that would also be good for YouTube is to have like we need a little introduction video mm-hmm, for, mm-hmm. for the for the YouTube channel. Ooh, oh, that's something really that we could one. have minions do for sure. That would be really good. Would be a little entry sequence with the theme song. Oh, that's yeah. pretty sweet idea. Do we had remember when we had we had the. What is twist? It's like mental oh, push-ups. Yeah. It's like mental push-ups. Yeah, but it doesn't have Blair. So we need something that has Blair in it. I ruined everything, guys. <laughs> I know. Jeez. To get new pictures. Gotta be the whole thing. Well, well, can't, like, somebody's got to be able to Photoshop a picture of Blair into that. I oh, mean, come those, on. Excuse me. Those those pictures, by the way, um, we, took, we took a whole bunch of pictures Kirsten picked out the one where she looked the hottest. Yeah. And and the one and there was no thought given to how Justin happened to look in that picture. Oh yes, there was. <laughs> actually, no. That picture is actually photoshopped. They took my head off of one of the other pictures. Yeah. The best one they could find is the one I looked French looking. And <laughs> they transposed it onto. That's why, as you can see, my my head is actually. Great disproportion to the size of my body. I have a tiny <laughs> body, but a very ginormous head. Uh huh. Um. So yeah, we do need new pictures. Yeah, I don't know how to make a clip reel, guys. A clip reel? No, I wouldn't do a clip reel. I wouldn't do video reel. I wouldn't. Yeah, bother I would that. do a video reel. Why? Why does that matter? Well, if you start with video. Oh, you just went quiet. Yeah, honest. you went quiet. If you start with video, what? Oh, if you start with video, you can just pull the audio from exactly. it. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, then you've got both together. Yeah. I don't know that it matters to radio people, but um, I suppose it, it would, definitely does. Because wouldn't it wouldn't hurt when, you know. It, it puts something across that, you know. Yeah, and they also know, like, otherwise. these people are going to come to work attractive and go home attractive still, and they'll look good on a billboard. <laughs> Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know why it matters for radio. In fact... I think I, it does I, matter. It does. I don't know. Actually, I think the video change has affected my audio quality of the huh? show. Huh? And not, not because of the microphones oh, yeah. or the internet or any of that stuff, actually, but because when we were doing the radio show, I feel like we only existed in the sounds that we made. Right. And I think I was more cognizant of that yeah. than I am in video where I feel like I'm talking to you in the room and, and not broadcasting, mm. which is weird yeah. because it, just as many people are supposedly able to see video, this stuff goes out eventually, it's on YouTube and things like that and people can see it, but when doing live radio, just because it's radio, because you're in the studio and it's the mics and you know that the only thing that exists that is going to be seen by your audience is this audio. It creates a different emphasis. Like, and, I, and I'm constantly, constantly messing up and s- commenting on an image that the audience can't see without describing right. it. Right, and you have to describe uh, it. Slipping. There's a lot of slipping there that I feel like, I don't know, I feel like radio, uh, maintaining that integrity of doing radio is really important. Jackson Play looks like a Vulcan on the Twist logo. How do you know I'm not? Oh, because I'm not logical, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, how would I make a clip reel? I could download whatever I wanted from YouTube, right? I could download videos, or you yeah. could send me videos, and then I could just use iMovie, essentially, right? It's really difficult and time-consuming. I, I did, I did one for uh, I. I applied for a post for a science reporter on the NPR out of Sacramento. Mm. And I put together what I thought was a pretty fun reel. I used the disclaimer, or the one with the uh, uh, converting the billions of dollars spent on the bank bailout into pennies and how far they'd reached to, like, past Mars. Or, mm-hmm. like, yeah, three I remember that. Right? So I used that, and then I used... we. It was a little bit of me and Kirsten together and some stuff, and... But mining that, and I only used audio. I mean, it, which to me is just, I, I think it would be more difficult to do video properly because the backgrounds change, clothes change, all these, you know. It would seem like a kind of a weirder cut together. But 
even that, just mining. You remember there was a time you talked about something and the conversation was pretty good. Then you go find it, and you, well, it was good. Not quite as good as I, I could edit it a little bit. Or, you know, you really have to mine through 428 hours of material to find it. So it is a daunting task. Mm -hmm. However, you know, I even came up with the idea of possibly faking a reel. Mm. You can do that too. Yeah. Right, I think that's how people actually do it. I went and tried to mine it from actual live radio because that's what we, you know, we're doing is just all live and it's without a net and it's not pre-recorded. Because a lot of what you hear on the radio, believe it or not, is edited. Like yeah. interview segments are edited. They don't sit there. They sit there and have a two-hour conversation, and some of it gets out on the radio for a lot of it. So it seems very polished and a lot cleaner. And I've been proud of the fact that we've always done this live. The but the idea that wow I could actually perfect and nail a reel if I just did it all canned. I don't know though. Maybe it, maybe then you don't nail it because then you don't have that live element that free you know free for all of conversation and subjects coming up. But somewhere in 428 hours has got to be a decent 10 minute reel. Yeah. And that might even be pushing it. 10 minutes, 10 minutes might even is be too, too long. long. Yeah. I no, would you say. Want you five want, or less, right? Yeah, three to five minutes. Yeah. You want three to five minutes. You can. What you want to start out with is something um, that you know is really catchy off the top, very quick and very catchy off the top, and then um, maybe a couple of short edits that kind of go back and forth between things, and then maybe something that's at a little longer, and then tie it up, go back to something else, and get so you get a little bit of variation, and then. And that's like one and a half minutes, and then you can add a little bit more to it to make it like three to five. But then um, you can have, you know, other things that you can send them that are like, this is a whole episode. This is my little reel. This is a whole episode. Like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's the deal. Mm -hmm. Three weeks from now, mm -hmm. on a, let's call it Saturday afternoon. When is three weeks from now? I don't know when that is. That's the next time I'm off on a weekend. That's why I'm saying this. Mm -hmm. Hoping that this would work for the two of you. But you probably work every weekend, don't you, buddy? Yeah, I do. So weekends don't work. So we need a Monday. That's what we need. We mm -hmm. need a Monday. So I was off this last Monday. So three Mondays from then would be whenever that is. Um, maybe that would be the day that we should get together and do the photos. Yeah, and do a live show. Can we do a live show that day too? That would be even. I think we more should awesome. if we're gonna get together. I don't see why we wouldn't do a live show. Right. Wait, what day would this be? It would be a weird day. It would be probably a Monday. Okay. A Monday, three weeks from last Monday, <laughs> whenever that was. I could probably do that. Holy cow, look at that. Mm -hmm. That was quick. So that was, it was Monday no, the 19th. No, wait, no, that'll be Labor Day, right? Three weeks from last no. Monday? No. It would be... Cause that, no, last Labor Day's Monday. the third, so that's two weeks from last Monday is Labor Day. So it'd be a week after Labor Day. Okay. So that's, what, the 10th? Ninth. 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 That'd be ninth. fine. I could Are do we penciling like in the ninth? Rock and roll. I think we should. This sounds good. We just planned something. Holy <laughs> moly. We could even try to put together a reel that day. <laughs> what right? If, oh, no, this is not a bad idea. If we picked some of our favorite stories that we've ever done and and rehashed and did an update or something. I'm predicting that they find the Higgs boson by the end of this year. <laughs> you never believed in the Higgs boson. Never. I still don't get it. Like, I'm <laughs> sorry. I just oh, let's I not ch choose that for the real. Yeah, <laughs> Higgs boson. My just... brain doesn't get bosons. The only good boson is a dead boson. But yeah, let's definitely meet up. This sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. Party. <laughs> No, no, we will be working, Blair. This is the show isn't all about having fun. <laughs> Work not... is fun. No, stop having fun. If you're having fun, you're doing this wrong. No. That's what I tell my kids when they when they're like laughing and playing. I tell them, "Are you having fun?" And they go, "Yeah." 
Like, knock it off. Stop it's not allowed to have fun. So I'm trying to think. I think 10 days from today will be my one-year anniversary of leaving to live in Israel. Oh, yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's so, kind of interesting. So soon. I know. So, it, time was, it, it went by really fast. Yeah. No, it didn't. No, it went really slow. What did? What, that, me that being in Israel? Year. No, no, you know, no. Yeah. Like, this last year, this is, this year was a slow year for me. This is the year that time slowed down. Not for me. It mm -hmm. did for me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, I, I think like I, I was, it was just yesterday I, like, just arrived in Israel. I think this, because um, most of this last year, I was waiting to meet my new daughter. Uh. And so I think that was what slowed it down. It was like this counting down day by day, hour by hour. <laughs> when is she going to come back? Bye. <laughs> well, blah, blah. <laughs> no, but I missed you too. I don't mean that. Don't get sad. Yeah, that was terrible. Especially. I just remember, yeah, you wanted me to come home. Yeah, no, well, I was scared. I was well, they were die. launching rockets and stuff. It's not safe in the world. I don't trust the world. The media made it look worse than it was. Um, yeah, well, I don't think so. I think the media <laughs> probably had it about, maybe even soft-sold it because they told the story so many times that it's like, and a rocket attack in Israel. Is this today's story or was this yesterday? <laughs> uh, is this tomorrow's story? I can't tell. It's not even dated. It doesn't need to be. It's just in the file. It recycles. It's Yeah, it's never safe. It's never safe. Hmm. Uh, I just learned that I can schedule posts through Facebook on, my piece, on the Dr. Kiki what? page. That's, That's pretty awesome. Pretty cool. Hmm. 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 Scheduling. Lots of scheduling in the social media so I can do things ahead of time. This is what I need to do. I will organize my life. <laughs> Black Bear Ranch is located between Humboldt University and the town of Weed in California. That's right. Oh, weed. Yeah. If you got that is very far north. Humboldt? Weed? No. I don't get it. That's really far north. By the way, um, it, I think things may have changed. I think there might actually be uh, a decent current crop of Humboldt grown marijuana. However, uh, when I was up there many, many moons ago, early, early 90s, when the grunge scene was like fully going on, and Pendleton shirts were back in fashion, and people wore beanies and smoked weed. Like, I mean, there's probably nothing's changed. Um, it didn't actually. It was. It came from other places mostly because the <laughs> ATF. It was. It was wild. Like, ATF was like on a full on like. Helicopter surveillance with heat-seeking, uh, you know, I remember vision. Like that. Yeah, and they were showing up at these little, I mean, little hippie commune out in the, you know, wilderness farms where they had like pen pot plants, and showing up with like M16s and people rappelling from helicopters, and it was just an insanely like we're spending how much money. To it's chop ridiculous. down a couple of pot plants, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I think they might have cut back on a lot of that since then because it was just an exorbitantly stupid expenditure. And, oh, and as a result, though, uh, most of the weed that was in town at the time came from out of state, even. Um, and, and even of the stuff that people were calling the Humboldt weed that would be, I think, probably sold elsewhere in the, in the country... Uh, didn't come from there because it was too much pressure. It was like impossible to be a good uh, a good yield grower at the time. For you pot growing historians out there, was... <laughs> and that was <laughs> that was marijuana manufacturing in the early nineties. It's very exciting. Yeah. Mm. So, so now we've got we've got a play date on the 9th of September. Mm -hmm. We've got a, uh, a commitment um, 
from the minions. No, it's not a commitment. We've got a directive to the minions to come up with a reel for us. Is that what we're doing? Um, Blair's going to work on the coffee table book. Kiki right. is going to work on the radio, uh, brick and mortar. Uh, and uh, I'm... Oh, yeah, so we're good. Yeah. I'm going to go to sleep, though, because really I need to do yes, whatever I'm doing go. tomorrow. Me I have too. to be driving, and then the children are going to be relying on They're going to go negotiate hard, too. I know they are. I've got the youngest one who doesn't realize how far it is to go anywhere. Is like yeah. down for going really far. She wants anywhere. to drive to New York. She doesn't care. And then I got the older one who's like, oh, let's stay home and do Minecraft and watch movies. This is ridiculous. Because he's also been traveling. He's like been this whole summer. He's been like Sweden and Berlin and Denmark and then just was on another like horseback riding trip this past week. He's sick of traveling. He just wants to stay home. So I've really got to figure out how to get him motivated to go somewhere tomorrow. So I've got a full morning. You'll help keep oh. the minions. How do you help keep... Wait, Jackson, I'm going to help keep the minions in line? <laughs> you don't want me in charge of law and order in any scenario. Oh, no. No. It would no. be... I would instigate the mutiny. I instigate mutiny against myself and my children. I instill it. I tell them not to have fun, and they go... I, I, I go, are you still having fun? They go, yes. And I go, stop it. And they go, never! Like, that's what I'm teaching them. Is to rebel <laughs> against... Authority. Everything. Which for right now is me. It's you know. I better. I probably better crack that a little bit at some point. All right, you guys. Let's hang up and let's. Uh, we will talk soon. You will. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking in person soon. We'll be getting things Yay! done and making things happen. Let's make this last quarter of 2013 a productive one, right? Yeah, I'm excited. Mm -hmm make it happen. Um, thank you everybody so much for watching. Those of you who have stuck with us through this conversation, uh, the meanderings that we've had. And Justin and Blair, thank you for an awesome show. Thanks for having me, Kiki. Of course. I yes. love it. I love it too. I love it. I love it. All right, you guys. Have a great night. You too. Ending broadcast now. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to hit the button. <laughs>